Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's your host, Tom Money. You're all very welcome to episode 28 of Buckshot for Wednesday, the 4th of October, 2017. How the fuck are you? I hope you're very well. Hope your uh, your week so far is okay. All right, you're into your Wednesday. You're into the half halfway through the final stretch. For some people, the brain starts shutting off this evening. Thursday and Friday are just they're just days they show up and I like your style that's kind of the way you should do it God bless you um, my week's been grand you're all very welcome any first time arrivers you're very welcome been getting some nice messages this week from people going keep up the fucking good work keep her lit which makes it all all worthwhile that and I suppose it's probably feeding my ego talking into a mic in the darkness of uh, the office here um, you know, thank you very much though Anybody making contact here, make more contact. Feel free. Shoot me some stuff. A guy the other day was a, from another podcast I did, which I'm going to throw up as well for any the, the non Venn diagram of people who do listen to Colin Geddes and don't listen to me. We did a, a spot cast where we just basically chatted and he'll use his, which he did last week, and I'll use it. I'll throw it up in the middle of the week. Maybe over the weekend or something, I'll throw it up. Just as a little, little bonus, little treat there for people. But I talked about, I think, bowel movements or something being bang on time, which they are. They have been since forever. Bang on time every single day. And the guy, the guy actually tweeted me. It's like the time I'd said, like, by 10 past 6, it's on, like, Donkey Kong in the evening. And at, like, 6.20, he tweeted me, went, hey, Tom, at 6.20. So, uh, you know, have you taken it up? And it, <laughs> so that is interaction. That is the kind of interaction I crave, in fact. I want you to get more stuff like that pick up on the little nuances and maybe time it you know what I mean that shows effort that's a man who I would want front row in a comedy gig anyway first time you're all very welcome anybody first time subscribe jump on whatever platform you're on obviously I'm on iTunes SoundCloud uh, one that I use actually on the old Android phone as well because I do have uh, uh, iTunes on the old phone as well because they have they've shaken hands and they've gotten together but I use CastBox as well it's quite a good one for finding um, so yeah just look up Buckshot if you're listening to this on somebody else's one just look up Buckshot it's spelled exactly how you fucking think it is um, yeah everything else Stitcher the whole fucking lot They should. it shows up I, I had a look it shows up on quite a few of them I'm on all the sorts of social media now I'm on Instagram with Tom O'Mahony Comic Facebook is Tom O'Mahony Comedian I'm really going to have to like, get all these lined up and sn- chatty snaps snapchats which I have been doing I'm still not sure because I don't know what I'm going to have to look at a tutorial or maybe somebody will sit down or just email me some points on what the fuck I'm doing because I just keep on putting it up to my story but then I keep on getting snaps from people and I'm assuming it's not directly meant for me they've created some sort of family that they can or you know our store kind of fucking thing but I'm getting like pictures of teenagers foreheads and stuff going well what's the crack <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at or some bleak kind of a thing it's like what like somebody sent me definitely a picture of like their hip and just wrote new Facebook profiler I mean are people just generating content for the crack are they just writing shit that just that there has to be some standard lads there has to be some fucking standard if you're going to send something you know send me a picture of your dog or a new tattoo or whatever but at least have it, have a point to it do you know what I mean I mean this you know even dick pics have a fucking point to them lad. I know I'm not saying I want to see any penises but I'm saying like fuck you know there's a point to them so that's where you'll catch me on of course the Gmail then if you want to lash it off you can send it to Tom O'Mahony Comedy or you can send it direct to the Buckshot one because that one's linked to the new phone got a new phone because the other one's shit in the bed but thankfully it was under warranty the old port fucking port he kept like Samsung for some reason I know they're a fucking prick and everybody hates them but it's actually not a bad phone bar for some reason a little water droplet thing would come up symbol would come up saying there's definitely moisture in the port here Tom you're like what moisture in the fucking port you absolute prick you've been sitting on the fucking shelf most of the day like, like oh, I don't know I don't, it's not like you can go at it like a fucking car engine, even though I don't really know what I'm doing there either, but at least you can fucking kind of go at it and make yourself feel good. You can't do anything with these phones, you can't, there's nothing you can do, you just got to trust some Asian chap you hand it to and go, can you fix that for me please? Can you? Can you fix that for me? Anyway, 
two ma- the two major gigs coming up this year before the Panto kicks off will be obviously uh, I was telling you about it last week the one in Tala which tickets have gone on sale so if you look up Peachtree East um, on Facebook or just, just go to their website Peachtree East in Tala for anybody in the local area there's, uh, there's apparently 100,000 people in Tala so it should it should do alright there was a great crowd the last time I was there to headline the show but this is my own show um, anybody knows it'll be a Saturday night it's uh, November 17th in Tala and then the London show now I know a few lads are coming because I got messages again this week saying there's a few of us coming but I would like to see uh, just just for my own peace of mind would you buy the tickets because uh, your man's uh, there's tickets gone alright which thankfully which, which means the show is going ahead I will be flying to London uh, <laughs> but do Snapchat me or Instagram me the pictures of the what we call it and do you know what I'll give you a, there'll be a mention from the stage anybody who does it does a mention from the stage uh, we'll have the fucking banter it'll be a fucking cracking night out anyway I know one chap he's coming over I think from he said he's come from Bristol or something I think he's bringing a couple of the boys that's November 25th in London at the Leicester Square Theatre and what I'll do actually on the SoundCloud and I hope it shows up in the, the full description I'll put in the actual link to both of those in uh, when I put, put this one up so you'll actually be able to just look see it in the actual description of what the podcast is about because every episode has its own description this one will have links to both those tickets look at me for being fucking hell I'm like my own fucking unbelievable PR agent talking with lads actually the last couple of days and it's like Jesus Christ I they are streets ahead of me when it comes to this kind of stuff and thankfully they're they're very willing to give me their advice like mates that who just know about this kind of shit you know what you need to do there Tom is you know which is great and like I, I was, think I was telling you I'm going to sit down with Gordon Rochford of the Conspiracy Guys after they do their live show which is I think October 10th I think it's probably sold out in the Sugar Club if it's not you should definitely go to that because the Conspiracy Guys and they'll have a couple of more lads there as well so from other podcasts coming over from the UK and stuff that one will sell absolutely fine um, and he, he's going to sit down he's going to fucking school me up to finish to, to help me finish building the website as well because Gordon is shit hot that kind of stuff so the week the week has been fun had uh, a week of kind of corporate shit with um, Ferrari Ireland over the weekend I'll fill you in on that on another date it's not as glamorous as it sounds but it's it's uh, it's fun it is fun it keeps keeps interesting and I did I didn't realise I'd forgotten where we store store some of the cars and stuff like that I went over there Friday morning <laughs> to make up one of these big dipshit Tom totally forgot because it's a period property beside it beside where we park the fucking yokes they're filming there's a British company filming a an adaption of Virginia wait now is it Virginia Woolf have I said that I'm not I'm not googling this by the way I, I refuse there's one thing I do, will not do on podcasts is google shit I know Chris googled something last weekend or last week but it's just not fuck that just just let that stupidity ramble because there's no fun in being right all the time sometimes it's just fun to go back to the 90s and just pretend that oh yeah we don't have all the answers immediately let's just ramble along here um, much like a couple of drunks at a bar with no wifi coverage um, so yeah the I walked straight in on set <laughs> everybody in period costume Eva Green is in this fucking thing this is no Mickey Mouse shit this isn't Eva Green is in it of um, all those other period things and I yeah what a fucking dickhead I walked straight in it's like uh, cut hello hello can we can we help you can we can we out find out what this man wants? Um, I'm like, oh, you're grand. You're grand. Apologies. Take fuck. Take bollocks. Still not made for a funny morning's chatty snap thing. Instagram thing. I, uh, yeah, I was telling you, I think, I think I told you last week, Stevie was over. Stevie Cahill from the fucking Egypt. We did a couple of sketches together and he's released them over a couple of days. They got a great response. I, I had no idea how these things went. Went. um, the, the Michael Fassbender one now a lot of people I don't think it got massive views but the people that did view it seemed to message me and everyone got really like that one so I, I mean there's not there's no money being made out of any of these things because they're on Facebook so pff, grand if only 15 people see it but they all fucking love it and make contact in class um, but technically it's like playing to a gig if it only like it's not great apparently if it only hits like 8,000 it's like have you ever played to 8,000 people like nobody has Chris Rock maybe has you know um and so, I, I, so I, I appreciate these things I did another one today with um, today I say today's Wednesday yesterday 
I'm recording this to Tuesday night um, because it's just handier because I bump it out in the morning and I'm gone all day tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm doing another podcast interview. So, um, but yeah, I recorded another one today with uh, Damon Blake. Damon Blake and George Fox two mates of mine should be a little bit of an algae it's a simplistic enough one just a bit of a ranty one I, turns out I fit in perfectly um, and the gigs last week I was oh I did that I did one corporate one and I did I did on Thursday night I was down in Clonmel down back in Tipperdon South Tipperary my home county um, Clonmel can be a weird one and especially well, no, it's a lovely one. I mean, we're back there again on twenty sixth with the on the twenty sixth of October with the comedy club. Excuse me, as I take a swig of water. Um, but I was opening for Deirdre O'Kane, and Deirdre's fucking lovely. Like she brought her buddy, who was called Deirdre as well. It worked out very handy. Um, but the the uh, they were very much of a, a female orientated audience, but they were sound. Very sound, very, very sound. Bar, there was a front row of absolute fucking wallies. I mean, they meant no harm, but they were like, like phenomenal. They were annoying the fuck out of everybody else too. Like, And it was just, I, I got kind of creepy with them and fucking made them feel weird. And they, they just had lost, it was like, I described them as like cattle that had been left out of the shed after a winter in. You know what I mean? They don't know what to do with themselves. They're jumping and bucking all over them. These five or six women completely... You wouldn't put any of them together as a gang, but it was like... So I'm guessing they all worked together because they were giving me nothing even when I asked them. They were just talking to each other really fucking loudly. Do you know what I mean? Like, they bizarrely loudly, like, for the front row. And it's not a massive club, like, but it was still... They, like, the rows behind were going, what the fuck? <laughs> I love that fucking awkwardness, too. Like, what the fuck? This one one went about these because they were trying to enjoy the shit out of this night because like, they were out they paid their fucking money in they were drinking their gin and these birds were up the front just fucking yammering back and forth to each other like they were like they were just just at a fucking in a bar and they sat front fucking row so I had a go at them quieting them up a bit um, but I warned them I said Deirdre's got if you think I'm bad for slapping you uh, Deirdre's gonna fucking drive me into the ground like a fucking fencing post and the place was going wild for that. Like, the audience was fucking savage. Like, they were real comedy people. Like, they were digging a big time. And right enough, I brought Deirdre out, and Deirdre slapped the fucking chops off him. She had to separate him, and everything. it was fucking brilliant. So, um, that was that. Yeah, shot back up then, because I, I, I stuff early Friday morning. Uh, what else went on this week? I'm not going to keep you too too long. Uh, take very excited news. I don't know if anybody has looked on the Instagram or anything. The dog has started pointing like a hunting dog. So we're going to take her pheasant shooting next month. So that's been scheduled in to see how she fares. I know she's supposed to be only a, a cutesy bootsy dog. Turns out she's got a, a hunting pedigree. <laughs> so fuck it. Got to see how she fares. It'll just be fun anyway. Just, you know, for the crack. The weather has definitely turned cold, folks. It is upon us. We're in October. Starting to wear the old jackets, the heavy shirts again. The old electric blanket is being bust out. Um, I'm lucky enough I don't really feel the cold or the heat, really. I think I'm kind of like a thermos flask. I'm just okay with anything, really. I'm not too stressed or excited about any anything. But, um, yeah, the fucking ice and shit will be back on the road again. Yes. But I'm just eating like a fucking pig. I've started back running, right, because I need to get my shit in gear. Also, I realised how, how gassed out, out I was last weekend hunting. Um, but also for the panto, because these people are all dancing people. So it's nothing on them to lip across the stage 55 times. If you're just a fat fucker like me, then yeah. It's, I, like I said, I've said this before, I've lost a stone and a half. I can't get to that level where I'm panting and sweating fucking bullets, like looking like, this is for children, this show. I can't be just a 36-year-old man in makeup and a bright costume standing on stage with my tongue hanging out fucking piss and sweat out through my fucking eyes yeah <laughs> I can't I can't do it so I'm trying to get my shit in gear again but I'm fucking starving in this weather I don't know what sort of fucking grizzly I am but it's like my body is thinking that I'm going fucking hibernating and I just fucking can't stop eating I'm fucking pregnant or so um that's about it. yeah listen I'm not gonna I've written down a bunch of other shit but I'm not really gonna waste your time I'm gonna plow straight on into this um, gigs coming up this week uh, tomorrow night with Thursday night I will be hosting the Battle of the Axe which is always good fucking crack because you get to kind of slap the chops off a bunch of people big lineup of comedians always on at the Battle of the Axe it's at the Hapeny Comedy Club upstairs just the Hapeny Bridge in 
in Temple Bar in Dublin. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, those two gigs I was telling you about, get on them. The Tala one, the very last two dates of Buckshot, and then there'll be a new show out next year. Mm-hmm. But um, I will be kind of off the radar for... But I'll be doing a lot over the watch we call it over the throughout the panto and all the rest of it. But the last two of Buckshot, my own stand up hour, is Tala in this on the seventeenth, that'll be at Peachtree East, and London the twenty fifth of November at the Museum of Comedy Leicester Square Theatre. Again, I'll stick these fucking things up. So moving swiftly along over to Mike Sheridan, my guest for today. I've been dicking Mike back and forth by accident. I'd be f- I I've been contacting we were chatting on Twitter. Twitter messaging and I kept on I was supposed to remind him two weeks in a row I was supposed to remind him on the Sunday or the Friday to and I thought I'd sent both the messages both times I went in I hadn't actually sent it I'd written the fucking message so here's me thinking Mike the ignorant fucker isn't com- coming back to me I hadn't so finally we got around to it and we got the narkiness out of the way as you may hear it right at the beginning <laughs> uh, Mike Sheridan you will you'll recognise him anybody from Ireland will recognise him but you'll see him a lot anyway and you'll hear why you recognise him because the guy's been everywhere and anything he's made a couple of class documentaries um, from the marathon running one that he did to um, the MMA one he went from a marathon runner to an MMA fighter it was just fucking phenomenal fucking thing the guy's super fit too like he's so fit it's not him for, uh, uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's a fucking champion of a bloke really really sound fella and digs all things entertainment which is handy because he's the head editor of entertainment.ie uh, was the editor of joe.ie so he's well known throughout the world he's, he's pretty much chatted to every single celebrity that has ever been a celebrity he chats about this in, in it too we get into a right bit of crack in this. this is, and again another one of these um another one of these fucking podcasts I could have gone on for ages but he had to go back to work and I had to fucking move on and do, the, do some sketch filming and stuff like that we'll be back on the thing again but for now please enjoy the lovely Mike Sheridan here we are Mike Sheridan How's it going? Thank you very much. Thanks very much for finally doing it. Jeez, I'm some fucking ball bag. I know, right? I was like, you wanted me to do it some week, and then I saw you done it with Chris Green, and I was like, oh, oh, oh this is this yeah. this is very rattle. What a fucking insult! What, what, like, what a fucking insult! Because I thought I'd sent you a message, and the next thing I went, looked, there still was sitting in the fucking <laughs> yoke. But I just thought, ah, Mike's just been, you know, big Mike's shot. Mike's just been a prick. He's just been big shot cool here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I'm sure Chris is very funny, isn't he? Uh, do you know what you've every ability here now I think this is your This is your, he said you weren't going to be as funny as he was did he did he, he say did, that yeah, that's literally his own words like yeah I'll tell you what's funny those dick pics he sends me yeah. they're pretty funny <laughs> now, I mean I've only ever seen my own but like Chris is Chris is yeah, yeah. very very funny he showed it to me here on the bike I wish we'd filmed the did he do it just, just from the naked from the waist <laughs> yeah. naked from the waist down it was kind of like do you remember did you ever see that film Waiting you know like where, yeah. yeah we just see the goat on me walking down the stairs here. I didn't know <laughs> I'm not even sure what I was looking. It's like a newborn child. He, like genuinely though, I, and I've said it before. I say the Brian work with Brian Lloyd, who's a, who's a really good friend of Chris as well. Chris could be, I think, genuinely the next the Irish John Stewart. He's that guy. He's got, he's got that kind yeah. of heightened satirical voice. He does. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. People align with, and you see it on Twitter, and everybody like the followers he gets. What's well, great is the people who don't get. Yeah, they don't <laughs> get general, it at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he put up some picture of himself wearing his jacket. That was totally not for him. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was yeah. like. It was like Jay-Z would wear this jacket, you know what I mean? It was like, badass or something, you know? And he was like that whole selfie thing in the mirror, you know? And, and I knew who I was dealing with, and I went, you look like a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and he messaged me, because that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah. But the amount of people were like, look awesome, kiss, kiss. And that, you knew he wasn't going for that. He was going yeah. for, no, I want to look like a bell end. Do you? Yeah. But I'm pointing the finger at people that do this shit, and everybody underneath it totally missed the fucking yeah. point. Oh, it was glorious to see it. Like, yeah, yeah. And but, even the show with Kira is great as well. Like, it's like it's one of those. I know they're on the weekends, but it was one of those. If they mention you on the show, you, you, you yeah, he made no mention on radio. But if they mention you on the show, you you get people following you on Twitter, or you get yeah. No, he made you. no mention of my of our podcast last week on this. Did weekend. he not? Yeah, no, cause, no, because I listened Fuck. to their show. I take like, back everything nice yeah. I said, Tom. Fuck him. Fuck that guy. Fucking Chris Green. Yeah, to be fair, they get they're under some. They're, I had no idea, but they're under the pump big time with like, pumping up music, pumping out <laughs> fucking it. like. You barely, when you listen to the podcast, it's probably an, of their show. It's probably I don't know, maybe an hour or two hour show. But there's like 
15 minutes of actual talking. Yeah, yeah. It's like, fuck, oh yeah, I never really think about radio that way. It's yeah. cut to, because I remember going into Spain and doing, because I had, there was like a, a weekly thing with myself and it was uh, Cormac and Daniela. Yeah. And it's kind of a weekly thing where they bring in Psycho Tom to be a mental patient for <laughs> 10, 15 minutes and just rant about the world of, just the fact that I don't get fashion. That's really most more than anything. Yeah. I didn't understand it. And they brought me in because I like to hunt. And because it was so far away, especially it was great to watch Daniela's face. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I talk about these kind of things, like, but it was. Um, it's you, the animal? Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so vegan. It's like, really? <laughs> that, leather, that leather skirt you're wearing right now. I bet, I bet it was a cut of a plastic cow. Yeah. That's what it was. But it was, uh, no, but more than anything, but it really pointed out to me, it's like, all oh, right. There's about seven words said throughout this entire fucking show. You yeah. just they've ridden you over with fucking advertising. Did it's, you ever do radio? Oh uh, no, I've never. I've well, I filled in uh, when it was Phantom back in the day. Um, Gav Bork, who's one of the writers in entertainment, that he um, used to host the uh, uh, Cine- Cinerama, it was called uh, back in Phantom, and I filled in from a few times. I hosted the show from a yeah. few times, and like I would contribute the odd time, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird kind of thing yeah. when, like, I've kind of, because I'm 35 and I'm a bit older now, and I started doing contributor stuff, because that's how you get in everything. Yeah. You do contributor yeah, yeah. stuff, and, you know, you, you give them knowledge on a certain subject, be it films or MMA or whatever it is, and people ask you to come in and do that. And the older I'm getting, the harder I find just contributing. And it's a strange yeah, thing, because, yeah, yeah. and you're, you're from, I'd say you're from doing the podcast, yeah. because you're used to facilitating conversations, yeah, as opposed to... I'm going to give you fucking knowledge on a thing that I know about. And the, the guy who uses the gauge is, is Brian, uh, who mentioned earlier on. He's, he works for us. He's just fucking brilliant contributor. Yeah. Passionate opinions on this, that, and that. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, I know, yeah. You're used to interviewing people. You're used to still having conversations. So it's just, my brain's just rewired a different way now. But uh, I, would, I do the odd bit. Yeah. You know, like I do the odd bit if I'm asked and I'm around, though. I'll do the up on 2FM or whatever it is. It's, like. a, it's a weird one for me because they'll ask me in about subjects like that because, um, and that's why I, I immediately took an interest because the first time I ever saw you, you did, because um, I did MMA back in the day, yeah. like, but it was, I'd come from a Taekwondo and karate background and like this would have been 2002, sure, we didn't know what the fuck we were at. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We really didn't. Do you know what I mean? We really, not tonight. We just lads didn't. fighting in a hall. Like, exactly, that's, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. SPG was back in the day as well. That's John Yeah, it, it was, yeah. well, I, even to that point, like, it was quite literally lads were matching up. It was almost like a fight club, so it'd be like Kung Fu versus fucking whatever. You know what I mean? So nobody knew what they were doing, but it was, um, they would ask me in about these things, but they go, but make it funny. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to give complete non-facts throughout this entire yeah. thing. And they'd be kind of half looking at me going, but we're looking for some facts, but you kept it. It's like, what, what do you want from me? You're bringing in a comedian <laughs> to talk about... I said, let's forget about that I ever did it. There's no point in because then it gets, you're trying to make serious and fucking yeah. jokey jokes. So I just... Go, yeah, now it's just... Yeah, so there was just clattering lads and they seem to be happy with that. But, <laughs> but did you... Cause I, were you always... Was it martial arts? Because I remember... I I'm trying to think back. It was a TV3 show, wasn't it? Was yeah, it? Well, so what happened was I... Oh, Jesus, fucking about 27, 28, I started running marathons and I went from... Like, it just... Everything fucking escalated. So I went from the car marathons to marathons, Ironman 70.3 to ultra marathons. Ended up doing. Made it way How long is an ultra marathon? Oh, I mean, or is it anything, anything over? Anything over a marathon, but like, 50, you know, you want to be doing at least 50k to be considered, you know, a proper ultra marathon. So I went from ultra marathons then to MMA, but before Barbaric Gentleman, before the MMA documentary, yeah. we made a documentary called Challenge 126 um, for Special Olympics Ireland. We, I think we ended up raising about 40 grand or something wow. like that. So we ran from Limerick to Dublin, as, as myself and, and a friend of mine, Brian. Uh, Brian Marr who was in 98FM now oh yeah 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 so two fucking Egypts never do that it was a really bad idea yeah. <laughs> so we did that we made the documentary that went down with Stanford Sports and then I'd always wanted to train in MMA my brother is a black belt in Japanese Jiu Jitsu oh right and if, like if, you know when you've got older siblings yeah and yeah, yeah. you're kind of you're shaped a little bit by the shit that they're kind of into yeah 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 and my brother Robert and Damien were always into the UFC so I always wanted to do it so I kind of just I was like right you know you know, there's always, there's always an excuse to back out unless you've got a fucking camera crew following you around. Absolutely, so, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I went and uh, I started training my own Roddy. Uh, he was obviously, he was Connor's main coach for the yeah. fight with Mayweather um, about four and a half, five years ago. And we shot the documentary over about, I think it was about six months, maybe a little less. And my girlfriend at the time, Carl, produced and she was fucking dead. And he put the whole thing together. Got his Dana White, got his Conor McGregor, uh, put the whole thing together. And then I fought a lad. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I lost the decision. But uh, Fuck that guy. <laughs> do you know what's funny? Uh, he's a really nice guy. He was genuinely a really, really nice guy. But uh, I was kind of blissfully unaware. I was ignorant and 
you know, because I've never done MMO. Look at going from ultramarathons, or as yeah. Old Roddy used to say, we did a load of press around it. Yeah. And, all, and Old Roddy was fucking gas. Old Roddy was like, Mike did a bit of running. A bit of fucking running. Fuck off. Like, so yeah. people would be like, it's because I was out of shape when I started, because when you were between the ultramarathons or between whatever, you would fucking, because you have to carb load. The whole thing is carb load. Yeah, but out of shape, Mike, and I mean, you weren't smoking fags and drinking fucking whiskey for uh, breakfast. Like. No, I was a chubby fucker. I get it. I get, like, even now looking back, I'm like, oh, the start of the documentary. Like, round the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it was like, it was an incredible, incredible experience. And, uh, and I mean, I'm sure I was a fucking nightmare to be around at that time. So my, like I said, my girlfriend at the time was yeah. producing it. How long did, did you have to drop what weight category did it put you in? They put me at the welterweight. And I mean, my natural weight's probably, I'm probably about 82, 83 now. Right. Uh, my natural weight's what I am now yeah. in. And then, but I mean, then I was like 86 and I was a fucking, I was chubby. So, <laughs> and I mean, I look back at the first you set. Where you weren't Ryan Nelson chubby. Yeah, right? I wasn't, yeah. but you know, like, and I had no real Big more. country Mike Sheridan. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Hairy enough anyway, like, you grow that fucking beard out. But uh, I remember the first session my own. And just looking at me, like you do a private session on Roddy, you are like the fucking unbelievable, they're the best things you can fucking right, do. Right, yeah, yeah. This is the man that holds the pads for Conor McGregor and is literally the best at it in the world. He's the MMA's version of Freddie Roach. He's right, incredible. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do a session with him and you fucking feel a million dollars. Yeah. And then you look back at the footage from the first session and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's just looking at me going, this poor bastard's got no coordination at all. I hope he's fucking tough. But yeah, the, the guy I fought was a guy called Alex Swan. Um, and like a gents but uh, about two three days out I was like because he was in great shape you know yeah. he's a fucking unit he was a personal trainer and uh, I remember one of the guys who had done my strength and conditioning a guy called John Connor in your strength institute was like oh yeah Alex is the former uh, junior Irish national taekwondo champion national, ta- national taekwondo champion and I was like what <laughs> fucking nobody told me that <laughs> so uh, yeah we had, we, it was a, I think it was a good fight but I look back at it now and I'm like oh I should have done this I've obviously been training for, for four and a half years yeah yeah and uh, oh, you, st- and you, st- you did you stuck with it I stuck with it yeah I mean it's uh, it's you know it's sometimes the practicalities of, of getting out there because it's SVG it's in Charlestown yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. out in Finglas and like my mum lives out there but it's just uh, going from work to out there yeah. and, you know so I'd had, a, I'd had a couple of months off while Owen was over in Vegas at the McGregor Mayweather yeah. camp and uh, I got to see him I hosted something with him there last week which is deadly and I got to do a couple of sessions and stuff like that now so back in for a couple of months off I did some fucking. Uh, I did a thing for Tatterman magazine. They asked me to do a fitness feature on. Oh, I saw issue. that. Yeah, yeah. Fancy man. Bollocks. There's, there's nothing more cringe for me because I've. I've tried and you're Irish. Yeah. I'm Irish, so yeah. I have that shame. I have yeah, that yeah. shame. Yeah. You know. Which is a good thing. It yeah, keeps yeah, you in yeah, like, can't does. be all American. Can be oh, here I changed my fucking Facebook profile and WhatsApp groups <laughs> light up. I don't fucking after that shoot went out. <laughs> After that, she went out to go back to that pox Chris Green. After that, she went yeah. out. I was like, who's going to be the first one to give me shit? WhatsApp group image changed straight away. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Green. <laughs> straight away. Just didn't, didn't say anything. Just just changed the image. But yeah, that was... um, that was, Yeah, not, not, not to fucking... Not to, to ramble too much, but that was that was just a strange thing to train. To look good. I'd never it's, done that before. It's bananas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it just feels inherently narcissistic. Because I've, oh, I've just started back... Actually, just running again, um, and this is this will sound the most bizarre reason why to get in shape because there's a fat fucker inside a lot of us, and I definitely I have that. Like, <laughs> I have him in a headlock right now at the minute, right? But there's, um, but I'm the hunting season, um, came, and it was only the we went out for it was the weekend before last, and I had started back running because I knew because there'd be points where you just got to carry a fucking big fuck ton, ton of deer. <laughs> on your shoulders basically like so that's real fucking manly and you're wearing a check shirt and everything I know yeah I don't have shirt. any other type that's of shirt so manly so <laughs> no, manly I tell you one thing though you would be all up in this because it's yeah. it's more so about patience and cardio yeah and like you're going fuck this noise like but as well as that then I was going this is going to add to it because last year myself and Carl Spain the panto right down in Limerick with professional panto people we got hired to be the two fucking agents I'd never even been to a panto so I had no concept of this thing. I lost a stone and a half with it lepping around and dancing. A stone and a half through the month of just December. What's that? What's that panto money like? You hear? Oh, it's, 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 that's a big part of your life. It's some good cheese. <laughs> it's some good cheese. To be honest, you can rely on that coming towards you. I always wonder. I'm looking, go maybe fucking like nine shows a day. Oh, it's, it's it's, you do two a day, and uh, and it's but it's it is full throttle, like because. You're in. You're dude, the main thing is you're actually. We found that we were surrounded by proper professionals. Like yeah. they brought people over from the West End. Like they're bringing in um, uh, Samantha Mumba 
is and then Dale what's Dale Cronin he was in this is my age showing Hometown Hometown oh fuck one of the boy bands yeah, yeah oh yeah 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 but sure I mean this is the phenomenal thing I was telling Chris about it last week that fact, shit that I don't get right about obviously because we're about the same age but you would even have more because you know these people that yeah. know this shit fuck no. but he tweeted I swear in my life he tweeted me the morning we went out for the photo shoot all up right uh, turns out he's from about 10 miles up the road from me and he's like fucking another tip lad or something like that yeah People who don't know where Tipperary is were just, you knew it. There was like Japanese fans, fan yeah. base of 105 in the space of 10 minutes. <laughs> retweets. You're like, what the fuck are you even retweeting? It's fucking dedicated, isn't it? Like, But freaky like. Yeah. Like, uh, like to the point, I will cut myself, Dale. You know, no, do you know what it is? It's like, you know, you've, you, when, you have, when, you, when you see somebody in those formative years <laughs> and you get a crush on somebody and it never goes away. I you suppose, know? yeah, no, yeah, really, yeah. You, you, you know, being a fucking teacher or whatever when you were in secondary right, school. Right, no. Room. And I think, I'd say that's probably what it is. Have you ran into any crushes? That, that I've had, yeah, that had you, years ago. you have... Interviewed tons of fucking big shots. Oh though. yeah, well yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've chatted to Gordon before as well. Gordon Hayden, and he'd be the same. It's yeah. like the junket setups are weird. So, I mean, it's always nice. And you I mean I've had, I have had opportunities when doing other podcasts yeah. stuff to sit down with people or in front of a live audience and to sit oh, down okay, with people yeah, yeah. for a long period of time and actually have a conversation with somebody. The junket setups are like. I mean, at Al, the last one did was Al Gore, and I had 10 minutes with him, 11 minutes with him. Fuck. And that's long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, most of the time you're talking four or five minutes. So it's difficult to, to have a real human interaction with somebody because you have to ask about the film. And you're number 15 that day. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I was only, I went to see Blade Runner, I took my nephew to the Blade Runner premiere last oh, night. deadly. He's like 17, and he fucking loved it, you know? And he was like, you, he goes, you've interviewed Harrison Ford, haven't you? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, what was he like? I was like, he was a bollocks like, but I didn't take it personally. Yeah. You know, he was like, it was for fucking cowboys and aliens. All I gave a shit about was John Favreau because Swingers is my favourite movie. Yeah, yeah, He yeah, directed yeah. it. So I didn't give a shit about Harrison Ford, you know. But I mean, I tried to be, it's Harrison Ford, he's still a legend, he's still... Yeah, yeah, but and he, he's, he, he, he's, he's was, allowed to be a bollocks too. Exactly, like, yeah. exactly. You don't you don't take it personally. I mean, there's some people who are just pricks. Yeah. You know, like, they're just not nice people. But for the most part, people are just trying to get through the day. And like, and then occasionally, I'm at, I'm at the point now because I'm the, I'm the editor of the site I work for. So uh, I can't go back and forth from England all the time um, because most of the junkets are in London. Right, yeah. But I'm at at the point now where I can be like, okay, I'll do this one. And I did that with Al Gore and I did that with Keanu Reeves uh, for John Wick 2. Did you get on with Keanu Keanu Reeves? Oh, fuck, legends. Is he just as cool? Is he cool as he fucking looks like? That man is 52 years old. That's some sick now. That is some sick now. He looks fucking younger than me. He is drinking fucking uteruses or something. (laughs) There is, what the fuck is he doing? Like, he has made, he shook hands with the devil or something. Like, there's no way. He he looks as well as he did in Bill and Ted. Oh, he looks probably fucking better, to be honest with you. He's in better shape, probably, than he did. What the fuck? The, tr- the, tr- the trick is because, I mean, it's literally like a, a waiting room um, at a dentist, but with people from fucking This Morning. Yeah. Sitting around, <laughs> you know, yeah. and kind of random MTV shows. Uh, but there used to be this kind of, you'd have this kind of thing in your head where you're like intimidated by London. I've done fucking a hundred of them. Yeah. Where you're like intimidated by Londoner because you'd see Steve Jones or whoever, these people you recognise uh, coming in to do to do these interviews. Yeah. Uh, but after a while, you're kind of like, you, you realise, oh, they're just as fucking dumb Steve as... Steve Jones, like, he's too pretty. He shouldn't be... Do you know what? There's a fu- funny one. Because he's only up fucking close, is he? I did... I did well, the, some bitch session, session here, actually. Yeah, no, I know. I'm myself, myself and Gordon Hayden at the Avatar Junker. That's how long ago, right? Right. And uh, fucking way back when, it was fucking deadly. Really cool setup. It was a cool thing to be part of, obviously. You know, biggest yeah. film of all time. So two of us are sitting there. We're, we're fucking chatting to your man Tubbs from Soccer AM. Oh, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Fucking Steve Jones walks up the stairs looking like somebody just flipped him out of GQ. Jesus. Fucking ridiculous looking man. I was like, fuck you, Steve Jones. Yeah. You handsome bastard. And then it turns out he seems quite nice. Then yeah, I too, didn't yeah. talk to him. I didn't even try. Man. I'm not standing next to that. No, not at all. No, no. It's like um, standing close to the sun. It's just yeah. you're going to get scorched. Like yeah, that. I saw him on something there recently and I was like, that's a fucking handsome man. Yeah, I'm comfortable enough my sexuality to be like you're a well, fucking 10 bro oh it all came down to it like you'd get, you, yeah, 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 you'd, you would you what'd you do would. last night bang Steve Jones nobody's gonna look at you <laughs> fucking odd for that they go are you gay nah, nah, nah. Just, nah it's a thing that had to happen like he was you know you know it's, <laughs> remember when Gordon looked at you for fuck's sake yeah, right? fuck off with yourself well, Steve well, you think you, so you have this kind of idea in your head with, with the with the London junkets and I've done them in Brazil and, yeah. and in New York and stuff as well for different films where you're like oh these people are like whatever and the last one I was at, the other girl when I was at, there was a, somebody from, now she was young. Yeah. And a lot of the time they're from big radio stations over there or whatever, fucking internet radio, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, listen yeah. To nowadays. And uh, <laughs> she had a producer with her. And I'd say she was probably in her early 20s. The producer wasn't much older. But to have producers to kind of 
handle them with the kitty gloves and be like, no. I was like, you're fucking really? producers. So the, you see this a lot, right? So the girl said something like, and, and, pe- and people listening to this might get this, for anybody in the industry, you know, they'll get it. The girl was like, oh, I always find it's better to have, you know, ask all of my questions with time left. You know, right. so I get through all of my yeah, questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the producer was like, no, you always kind of want to have too many... <laughs> Yeah. Because if you run out of questions, you just got to be sitting across Malagor going... You better be one charming bitch. Yeah, exactly. You better be one charming, enjoyable you're gonna be, fun. You're going to be sitting across Malagor going, well, that's all I have, Al. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nice to meet you. Fuck. Yeah, so there's there's surreal setups. They're like... You know, you, like, like I could fucking say I've like, met Leonardo and Capio and all these fucking people, but like, I've sat in a room room for fucking five, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah, and that's yeah. really what, it's still really cool, and like, so John Favreau and, and people like that, they're the people I give a fuck about, or... It was John, John Cav- Favreau, I'd say, was very cool. Oh, uh, John yeah. Favreau was like, the, the first time I was ever in New York, I was in college at the time, yeah. and it was, two, it was 2002, and uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, we went together, she got me a present for Christmas, we went across, and it was like December or something. So we, we were fucking, like, you know, total tourists. Yeah. Like, woo, snow everywhere. We are staying just off Fifth Avenue. And uh, we walk out and we're like, where's the Empire State Building? <laughs> like, walking around, not thinking to fucking look up and be like, oh! You, you, were, like, you were like Eddie Murphy and coming to America. <laughs> pretty yeah. much, yeah. <laughs> pretty fucking much. And we and we're like, kind of like, oh, there's the Empire State Building. So we see this, like, kind of fracas outside the Empire State Building. Yeah. And we're like, oh, they're filming something. Oh, my God. We were in film school. So we're like, oh, my God, they're fucking filming a thing. Let's go fucking see who it is. So we see Will Ferrell outside. Ah, stop. Dressed as an elf. Ah, oh, stop. And we're like, it's the scene, it was so, long story short, it's the scene, a scene in Elf where they're throwing them, the two security guards are throwing them. Yeah, yeah. Outside of, uh, throwing them out of the Empire State Building, uh, where James Cannes, his father in his office was. Yeah, yeah. And I just didn't give a fuck about Will Ferrell. All school I'd come out with yeah. So, like, I mean, I knew who he was, but I could see John Farrell directed that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told John Farrell that story. I just stood there for like two hours and just watched him work. <laughs> I just watched him between takes going over yeah, to Farrell. Yeah. And talking to his ads and kind of talking to his crew because I was obsessed with swingers. Like, yeah. still am, still one of my favorite movies. And I kind of said that to him. It's difficult to get that kind of, you know, because when they're turning over cameras back in the day, you used to have beta yeah. tapes. Yeah, yeah. Now everything's digital, so you don't even have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty seconds yeah, yeah. where they're taking the tapes out, they just keep rolling. Yeah. You know, so to have some sort of hey, how's it going? I'm whoever. You know, it's it's difficult because you've somebody clicking their fingers, yeah. time and giving you countdowns, but. I had a I had a great chat with John because I kind of told him that. Yeah. And I mean, like he used to have a, he was one of the first kind of, I suppose, celebrities to embrace the internet and social media and uh, like kind of talk at the fans. He used to have a forum called gettingitmade.com when he made that movie Made with Vince Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. His first movie as a director and Elf was the second movie and he would get back to people and he got back Fuck. to me. He got back, it's like fucking 2000, whatever, 2001. He would get back to people. He got back to me and I told him. And straight away, like, I was like, I'm fucking, he's like, this guy's genuine. We had a fucking great talk. We chat for about, I think, 15 minutes. Wow. So everybody in the room's freaking out. And I've never asked. Rewriting their shit yeah, going, no, I like, better come up with a fucking no, notion. No, it's like, it's more, because the crews are like, they're all, everybody's on a fucking schedule. So it's weird to, when you bring a celebrity into a room, yeah. or you move a celebrity, like a really big celebrity from room to room, and you're in Claridge's or Soho Hotel or wherever you are, people just freak the fuck out. You, you know can imagine I mean? though because even Claridge itself is such a fucking Jesus Christ like in moment you know it's not yeah. it's not exactly an ibis you no, know exactly I mean you fucking Robert Downey Jr. or something to walk past you and <laughs> it was, it was it, like and it's just it's surreal but after a certain point like, the, the first interview I ever did was Adam Sandler the first on camera interview I ever did was Adam Sandler and it was for uh, Don't Mess With The Zohan he came to Dublin oh yeah 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 and uh, I was like looking back I don't know where the fuck it is I'm sure somebody can find somewhere but my face is just shiny because I'd never done on camera before this is before I did uh, Kids TV and RT and I was just like you could see your reflection on my fucking yeah, forehead yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know you put powder on Gordon yeah. Hayden's a great man for the powder he is some man for the powder great man I for had, the powder I knew nothing about powdering <laughs> yourself the only thing I'd ever done was I'd been I'd done I, was, I did demo on Ivor but there was people that did that to your face yeah. in the morning <laughs> and I never considered it and it was only I did uh, as we've all done upload it and whatever and I yeah. did the Christmas one with him out in Causey Farm out in the fucking hay barn and He's up there and he's fucking lashing on this stuff. I goes, what's the crack here? <laughs> and he goes, oh, come here one second. And he starts lashing powder. I went, man, this might be, uh, this might be a new, a really, this is something I thought I would never get to experience. Well, you just, you'll get used to it and then you'll be like fucking powder every day now because it looks so much better. He, in fairness, I saw it back and he definitely flaked on too much. Like, <laughs> I looked like a whore. Basically, I looked like, 
<laughs> so, this isn't just taking the shine yeah. on. This is putting a new... Ho- I look like a different person. Oh, a fucking memo went around the RTE, like the, the makeup artist RTE, about how much I sweated on her. Yeah. I saw it. They had it on the fucking mirror. <laughs> it's a new YouTube, and I was like, well, sure, give him his own powder for the junkets, for the movie junkets when I was going across yeah. the counter for RTE as well. And But the Sander one was funny because I interviewed him three times in the space of a year, which is unusual. Right. He just had that many films coming out. And he is one the, better than the next. <laughs> I, I, I fucking, I, you know, I, I like it because it's I, silly. They're I all really, silly. I just, he's an incredibly, incredibly sweet man. Is he? And you can always tell when you walk into a room what they're like with the people that are shooting. So you have your crew. Yeah. Like I think it's special treats or whoever it is in the UK, and it's there or whoever it is in Ireland. Yeah. They mix them up obviously depending on the studio. And if they're engaging with the crew, they're generally okay. Yeah. You know, like, so, like, fucking Sean William Scott is, like, Stifler, or, like, I always, I'll always remember him, or I always remember Adam Sandler, and they're, like, have him crack with the crew. Oh, fair and enough, And laugh yeah. the crew, and you're, like, he's fucking sound. This, yeah. this is kind of on me, uh, at the fuck up or not. But you, you get a little bit spoiled then, because he was my first one. Yeah. And I'm, like, oh, fucking, everybody's got to be this nice, and you're, like, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I talked to Gordon about it, all yeah, right, yeah. on the podcast, and he was, like, the Tom Cruise, uh, yeah, Tom Cruise effect is very... He's, he's shut down until they're ready to go cameras are on boom yeah. you know that's what he was saying it was like with him he wasn't the warmest man you'll ever meet like. no no I mean I've, I've never I've never interviewed Cruz or anything he's just I mean he doesn't do movie junkets properly but, oh for Jesus because people are going to be like fucking Scientology what's yeah, the story yeah 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 you're f- so yeah I mean and I, I, get, I mean you get it to a certain degree as well because you could get somebody going in beforehand and there was a, there was a during years ago I'm not going to say his fucking name but he was notorious for pissing off people really um, and on purpose, like just yeah, being just a trying to be combative in a fucking movie junket setup, and you're like, when you when you're when you're fucking when you're like at the level of Parkinson or Graham Norton or Letterman or whoever it yeah. is that you they come to you, still don't piss them off, but you know you're as big as they are. In, to yeah, yeah, degree, yeah. And a fucking junket setup, Get you're scum, yourself, you're scum on the bottom <laughs> of their shoes, you know, <laughs> and you're just pissing people off that are going for you're pissing them off for people that are going next. So it an instant with like uh, it was Nicholas Cage and it was in New York. And this guy fucking uh, genuinely believed that he had, you know, beef with Nicholas Cage. Watched from interviews that he did. <laughs> Nicholas Cage didn't give a fuck, like. And uh, it was for some fucking terrible movie Nicholas Cage didn't care about. Oh, G G Force, and he like uh, oh, yeah. he, he voiced he voiced it. He's like, was it a, a mole? It was about gerbils or hamsters. Yes, yeah, yeah. But he was like, and he said to me, he's like, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't like the hamsters. I didn't want to voice a hamster. I was like, I like moles. There's a bit of darkness with the, with the mo- <laughs> taking the piss I got yeah, that straight away completely, but the yeah. guy that got in before me I had pissed him off and I had to kind of feel like I had to kind of address it and be like oh, the only yo- there's like an Irish guy following another Irish guy and uh, you've, flown, you've kind of flown all that way and, and you, you want the interview to go well and you know yeah. and it, it becomes like it, one thing it does do, one thing the junkets do is they set you up for live TV because yeah. You cannot fuck up in that real, yeah, yeah, in that yeah. real time way. You need to keep the conversation Absolutely, going. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you fucking piss somebody off, you have to watch them then in films for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah, and be like, oh, I fucking hate me. Oh, I hate yeah, me. Jesus I hate Christ! Me. I never like, thought of it. Fuck. Yeah. Like, I mean, he probably doesn't hate you, hate you, but yeah, for that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those few minutes, they were like, oh, fuck this guy. Fuck, Who yeah, the yeah. fuck does this guy think he is? Fuck it, this is... Yeah, anyway. But uh, yeah, there's, there's real setups and, you know, I, I don't know how much longer the traditional junk that's going to last and that fly people over to London and you get a few minutes with them, fuck off. Because they're trying to... They're, they're kind of messing with influencers and all that stuff now. And, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so... It's always good. Like I mean, in an ideal world, you have podcasts with people, and you get and you see them. You know, with Marin and, and all these oh, like, sure. Rogan yeah, yeah. and all these guys. You, you you know you can have sit down conversations mm. with people and and get kind of real shit. But I think a lot of the time that's what the publicists are afraid of. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, it, it, it's Jesus Christ. I mean, the whole world is changing. Like the dynamic of all this kind of stuff because people probably want to know more. You know, more the honest side of things. Yeah. Like. And I'd say a lot of, like, unless you have a complete fucking mentor, they know kind of how to self edit themselves. Do you know what I mean? They're not, Some do. I suppose, yeah, actually, I, we were talking off air just about one who absolutely didn't self edit at all my podcast <laughs> to the point where it's still in the archives. Jesus Christ. And do you, do you, is your one still running? Or have you even time for your own podcast uh, these days? No, like? we, I did, we did one uh, called a manual. Oh, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah on on entertainment.ie. We did about, I think we did about 30 of them. And we used to shoot them as well. And uh, we fucking some deadly guests. We we um, we Jack Whitehall as Bishop. Uh, we had a couple of big time directors. Yeah, uh, we Seamus. Um, and like, but it was kind of random because 
it was kind of like a reflection of me and, and the shit I was into. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, so I would have like, I had on Roddy MMA fighters, I had yeah. strength conditioning coaches, I had, uh, you know, champion powerlifters and, and all this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and it was yeah. random and then I'd have an actor on or then I'd have somebody on talking about politics and entertainment.e probably, where I'm the editor of, probably wasn't the right place for it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, movies and fucking TV and, and kind of whatever it is and the content was kind of, was being refined back, which makes sense, which makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, I do have the fucking time for it. I'm just fucking lazy, to be honest with you. Yeah, but, yeah, but you're not lazy. Like, like you, you work out and go to the gym and shit. That doesn't, that doesn't count, though. Doesn't that? No, not really. Like, I, like, I, I don't know. I, th- I think people, you know, d- d- people are lazy in different ways. Yeah, yeah, and, right. No, you know, yeah. that doesn't feel like that doesn't feel like work to me. And also, as well, like, I don't have kids. I don't have a family. Right, no, yeah. So yeah. I can fucking piss off to the gym for a couple of hours. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or go, or go and spar or what I your lads and kind of walk around the other lads if they want to get a session, they have a fight coming up and they want to yeah. get a session and move around with them or just go for a run or, you know what I mean? Work is busy and I have other shit going on, but no. There's no, I just wouldn't see this. So I just I just look in the mirror and fat chain myself into going. That's the way to do it. Have some fucking caffeine and be like, that's the way to do it. Fat fuck. You what absolute you fat fuck. fuck. No, I started back running and it's. I was going to do kind of an Instagram thing, like, you know what I mean, just to show, but even as, it's like, no, I might wait a, wait a month to even get to get to actually end a normal enough stand. I didn't realise how unfit I was after gaming. Yeah. Like, Fuck it me. Goes, it goes quick. It ah, really does. shit. And you know what it is? It's the, it's the source. At like, yeah. Like that, especially after, like, after a heavy sparring session or a heavy jiu-jitsu session, because from the start on, what he would say, Look, you know, he wouldn't he wouldn't put me in with the beginners. He yeah. put me straight in with the good guys. And that might sound like, uh, you know, a lamb to the slaughter, but it wasn't. Because the good guys, especially with jiu-jitsu, and I'm still shit at jiu-jitsu, are all flow, and it's all technical, and it's all... So the not... beginners try and rip your head off. And the right, beginners yeah, try and rip yeah, your yeah. Arms off. So super smart uh, from, from, from the start, you know. But right. if you do a heavy <laughs> session, you go in with a young lad, or a big lad, or whatever, you're, you can be fucking at 35. You can, you can very oh, much, I can only very imagine. much feel it. You can be like... Because you see what's happening with, with the UFC now is that you see these guys going on losing streaks. All of a sudden, yeah. these guys are fucking killers and they're going on losing streaks. You're like, oh, I wonder why they're going on losing streaks. You're yeah. like, oh, because they were juiced off their fucking heads. Yeah. And they could yeah, train yeah, yeah. six times a day and then they have to, they're forced to go off the steroids because of Jeff Nazinski, who's, you know, obviously called Lance Armstrong. You saw oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but he's, he's now the call, uh, he's the main guy in the, in the UFC for uh, drug testing and everything else. I should have come here. This but now they're, all injured. Fucking but now they're all injured and they're all, you know, you see it happening a bit. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody. <laughs> fucking fair. It level out a small bit now. Level out a small bit now. Yeah. That's a banana shit. I'm actually in, uh, next week I'm interviewing, um, so Richie Kiley. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bites on bomb. He's fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking cute horrors after yeah. he's some boy to fucking to to press the flesh like he's yeah. after getting himself a fucking title shot with Bama like he and he's is, only his yeah. his third fight like yeah, yeah, and he's, he's coaching out I think an SBG title there yeah. as well. Yeah, he's a bad man, Richie. Fuck, he's, a, he's you know he's still he's two and zero. So to, to get a title shot, you know it's you, good going though. Well, you have to have that fucking personality, and he's smart enough it's to realize that. It's sports entertainment too, like isn't it? It is, but I mean that, that's kind of fucking anything. I think it's any, it is anything. Yeah. There's the mad shit. I was chatting with. Um, because you know you think okay well the newer sports like you MMA and stuff like that and it's a bit born out of America they love their hype and their fucking yeah. fireworks with things but sports entertainment I never really thought about it in other ways how lads would play it and there's there's moments in matches too like, like I had Brendan Maher on the podcast the Tipperary captain and I was saying you know there's what you know is 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 it just all out balls to the wall? What is the love affair that people have with hurling? Because it's it's like this time. Look, we can do all the skillful shit. We've been known as in the last five six years, especially, it's been quite a skillful team. But there's times this is when you you just know that the, there's a lull in the audience. Fucking eighty thousand people because, <laughs> and you'll actually take a ball. Centre back will take a ball, and rather than just politely, smartly, like maybe tapping it up through the field, you'll bust a fella into the head like with a shoulder, and then you'll <laughs> fucking launch it up for all your work. And like some of the other players sometimes don't get it, but he says you need that to reignite the, yeah. the audience. Yeah. I was like, are you fucking serious? He goes, oh yeah. He says, you're at nothing if you don't have a crowd with you. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I never even... He says, some, look, you'll see some amazing deft, deft hand skill at club level where there's maybe 500 people watching. He says, but you'll see the, where you'll see the big show moves. He says, this is in the semi finals. That's what the crowd responds to. He says, yeah. you got, he says yeah. no, he says, when I was 21, 22, I wouldn't have known any of that shit. I'm all, just get it up and win the fucking match. Yeah. It's not about winning the match. Yeah, he's a crowd You've got to put a show on too, like. Yeah. You've got to go. Just be, he says, you might blow it fucking wide. He's, but you got their blood pumping. That's, yeah. that's like WWE stuff. Because yeah. I'm telling you. It's because 
you have to be you have to be able to control the crowd too like yeah yeah so I mean, mar- marketing I think is, is kind of everything and something that I'm not fucking good at like I, f- I just find it cringe like I'm not I'm not somebody to put and like social media now it's just taking it to a different level on Instagram but that's, you see we're we're definitely we're like I just turned 36 last week and it's we're definitely probably 10 years out from what yeah. the other the others that are now up to the age of 25 it's it's shameless like, yeah. it is utterly it's here's my life the world and yeah. they just know the fucking thing that like how they know the group to be in to make things fucking viral and you you would look at it and go what the fuck is this about I, I'm not and uh, kids will just sit there just licking the fucking phone <laughs> they'll love it yeah. they'll love it it's, it's, I mean it's nuts and I mean uh, I, we started we started another website called the Fort Wall the Fort yes Wall I meant to ask you yeah, about yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, I wrote a piece on it called about the evolution of entertainment and right. it, pissed, it pissed some people off because my whole thing about the evolution of entertainment was because I mean the influencer thing isn't my thing oh, but oh. but like I mean and it does make me do that as well yeah. that said it's not for us and I've had these conversations with people when people are kind of rammed down your throat a little bit that's when it gets annoying that's yeah. when it kind of gets frustrating but I was listening to something that, fuck, I, was watching, I was listening to a, a Rogan podcast with Gary V Gary Vernick oh yeah and Gary Vernick is deadly but he can be a bit fucking much sometimes yeah. as well kind of small doses you know but he was fucking totally on point I remember him, he said something to Rogan like in the 40s when TV or 50s when TV in America was kind of just sort of happening yeah. radio was where everything was yeah 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 and uh, people on people at radio were looking at TV people who were on radio were looking at the TV thinking what the fuck is this new shit yeah looking yeah, down yeah, the nose yeah. at it yeah so you wouldn't have seen a lot of people transition from radio to TV then yeah uh, because they would have fucking looked down their nose at it yeah and I see I see that happening now with, with the influencer thing and I wrote a piece about it for the site I think fucking torn us under. They were like, fucking influencers are cunts. I'm like, well, let's not make blanket statements about anybody. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. You don't yeah. know, unless you know them personally and they happen to be cunts, then fair enough, they're cunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, I thought that was, because it's, it's not for me, but I get it. And it's that kind of, I think, urge people as a whole as well. We don't we don't like people who are too sure of themselves. Yeah, 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 we don't. And it, also, even our, in ourselves, like it's rare that you, that level of self or whatever about self-confidence but the lack of self-doubt you're going but this is exactly what just popped into my head so I'm going to say this out the way rather than this which almost seems like a bit of an American thing like where it's like it's the greatest fucking thought in the world I just had there now (laughs) whereas typically you go "Ah, stand back a fucking second have have another look at that now because that's shit I mean I don't know whether it's a a good or a bad thing but I think it's definitely true is it it diluting the quality of shit that's coming out because it it would seem to me a lot of this influencer and for anybody listening I just I'm inverting I'm doing bunny (laughs) because I I only like I've only come on the influencer thing and I I didn't realise I knew some influencers yeah. I didn't and it was only when I looked and they actually have it in their bios and stuff and you're like and I said I think I said it to Chris it was like if you have to write it in your bio that's so I was just going to say that are yeah. you yeah are you really are you really yeah are you really like you know but it, like I couldn't fathom this shit it's like so I bought a packet of biscuits today it's like biscuits okay <laughs> right and check out these biscuits <laughs> I'm not going to eat those fucking biscuits because you told me to eat those biscuits. Like, I, but I think the idea is, I think what I mean, what traditional media is kind of thing. By traditional, I mean fucking digital now. Yeah, at this yeah, point, yeah. I think people are kind of expecting the arse to fall out a little bit, but I have no idea. You know, I think it's. I think people who know how to market themselves can probably market anything and have enough self awareness to know. But it's taken where their no audience invest- is going to be. And it's what, taken no it's investment. Go. So I mean, yeah. if the arse does fall out of it, what? Yeah, you stop you. What? Delete fucking Instagram off your phone. That's <laughs> yeah. it. That's your office. It's you your phone. You don't have to let anybody go. No. There <laughs> is no there's go. no sad letters home. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, it's, this is the thing. Like, the, the, the lads that I know that I was, it was funny because I was, I'm being touted tout or being put forward for this ad for, uh, I won't, it was in, uh, bookies and they liked the cut of my jib whatever way it was going about it and it was a mate of mine who was putting me forward for it and I, just out of interest I texted him the other day going was there any word on that he went yeah you got blown out of the water by <laughs> an influencer I was like but the only thing is I like the lad I do like the lad but it was like but he's not even relevant to what they wanted to do and he yeah. was like doesn't matter reach got doesn't that matter he's, he's got, got that, reach, he's man. got that reach man and I went oh, fair enough but also it can work in my f- in favour too because we were down at the Cork Comedy Festival week before last and I had no idea my show was on the, f- the opening show no idea how tickets were going to it's only a small club that they were having in anyway but I didn't know how it was going or anything like that and I walked in no posters no mention of it just comedy club out, out of the, the comedy the comedy festival no mention throughout the bar or that was downstairs and for fuck's sake there's be one man and his dog sold out 
I, and I said to him, how the fuck did you pull this move off? He goes, oh, we just Snapchatted your face a bunch of times during the yeah. movie. Yeah, that's how it works now. It's not, it's not just posters everywhere now. That's what it is. And it's people like, take... Yeah. No, the kids aren't looking at walls. They're looking at their fucking phone and they take what's on their phone seriously. Yeah. Do you know, I actually, like, even... I've noticed a spike in listeners if I just mention it again in the middle of the week. Yeah. Quite literally, within 30 seconds, you'll see people have jumped on and actually just started downloading yeah. because I'll say it on Snapchat. Yeah. It's like, fucking hell. What's now? I don't... I, I don't know what I'm like, doing. Mike. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, do I take selfies? Like, I'm fucking... I'm like, what I, do I... I was putting up... I, I, when I did the, the fitness series for Tatler Man, I did a feature and I did uh, I did some videos for the yeah. full wall and stuff while, while we were doing it. And I was like, I just... like who, what, who Who's this serving? You know what I mean? I'm like self-loading as I'm doing it and yeah. I, I, I two really I'd actually two great trainers who would have uh, Stephen Ward and um, Ray, um, Ray Kiernan who kind of helped me well basically I heard them to shout at me while I was doing so yeah. they kind of looked at me at the start and they were like you fucking you don't need a trainer yeah, like, yeah. You know, but it's good it's reassuring it's good yeah, yeah. reassuring for them yeah. to be like you're doing this wrong or do this yeah. I still use some of the training now but they would have they filmed some videos for me and stuff and I was putting them up and I was like how am I helping do you know what I mean? Like, am I actually helping anybody here? Am I, this is how you do it. I can only imagine they're self-serving. Yeah. I, that's all I can yeah. imagine it's for. Because well, maybe that's okay. You know? Yeah, if you're, it's just if not got, for me. You if you've got shit to sell. Like, there was one of the... the we filmed a couple of... Um, actually, we did a... a it, was, it was a mock of a junket sketch last week. It was one of the lads... I don't know if you've seen The Fup in Egypt. No, no, no. Uh, I did the fucking colossal following as as, a, as three individual guys. But they're all friends. They all work together down in Clanmel as... Uh, Psychiatric nurses, oh, Jesus but they just they, banging out, yeah. But they just bang out funny sketches. One of the lads, Sen and Burn. Now he'd be a lad. He was in the top ten viners in the world because his vines were fucking incredibly funny. Seven I was seconds. Like, what the fuck is a viner? And it's I was like, vines of Twitter. Vine, Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. this is shit. I all learned. <laughs> I've learned. I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I learned this in the last fortnight. Like, but he, um, but came over and we filmed a couple. Uh, I was down down home last last week. Filmed a couple over there and we did uh, a junket one. But he was explaining to me, oh yeah, we, it was a piss take of Mas- Michael Fassbender having a ridiculous American accent and how when he's around Americans he'll have this American accent. And we had it that an Irish fella came in who actually went to Gwail Talk with him years ago. Going, you can knock the fucking accent on the head, Mike. It's grand. And straight away he puts on like a paddy cap. Go, oh, just hold on. You know, he just went straight, cut back into Healy Ray. Like, and then as soon as he left, an American junk or journalist came in. He was back into American again but he was saying I was, he's watching all Snapchat this and I went alright he goes I'll just put up a picture of a, a screenshot of it and I'll put attack, you can attach a link then to where it goes and he says 2,000 people within an hour he's fucking, like, fucking joking he goes watch what happens he goes I like, he says, I'll put up a picture of your well he was calling it snap code it was your fucking profile picture oh, okay. which is your name underneath it he goes watch this 75 new people following me <laughs> within three minutes. Yeah. They're yeah. superstars. And he says, oh, these guys, yeah. these guys can't go anywhere. If yeah. they go as a trio in anywhere, they'll get, say they walk in, I think they walked, he was telling me they walked into, was it TK Maxx or something? It was just to get a few cheap bits for a sketch in the way of, I think they wanted to dress up as priests or something. Yeah. They wanted to get black jumpers or black shirts. And the guy, the manager in there stopped him and went, whoa, whoa, geez, you're the fucking agents. He goes, free shit. Yeah. He went, have the free shit and would you consider making a video? Yeah. And, Name your price, and we'll see. Can we work it from head office? It's like what? I think the lads have just strolled in there. Even they're shocked by, by just yeah, the yeah. level. And there's people you like. I talk about them all the time. That now friends, the two Johnnies, like the two lads, they do kind of GA themed fucking Instagram and Snapchat. They now drive both the lads drive around in free tour eggs, <laughs> both sides into tour eggs to all the matches. AIB paid the lads to snap. You just want to see them with the yeah, yeah. and if the lads snap for AIB GA. And it's a really influential, like they and they're great. The lads hang around and sign autographs after the kids love them because they do funny sketches. It's like been able to do, like been able to like kind of bring a, br- a brand on board. Like yeah, fucking, an AIB is not easy to do. It's a fucking bank, like yeah. But to be able to bring a brand, be it a car, be it a, a kind of a clothing company, whatever it is, and to do it organically, there's a trick to that because newspapers and websites and TV shows and radio shows and you now podcasts have been doing that yeah. for a long time yeah, yeah. and some people are good at it and some people are bad at it it doesn't make you any less creative because you're bringing a brand on board it's what you do with the brand now there's an element of as well fucking him he's got like 40,000 whatever yeah yeah you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and then like and there's other people who are like kind of 
maybe a bit too shameless with it. Yeah. A bit too forceful with wanting the free stuff. I'm at the point now where, like, I've gotten some free things. Yeah. And just more as an editor can run public. So I see pictures of you up. You get some fancy nights out too. Uh, like, you're I, I, between I, yourself and, and, and Tom Cross. <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> Fucking Cross. Well, no, I love Crossy. I love Crossy. You don't Crossy, show up to as many Cross. shit. Cry, uh, I, man. I have to go to the premieres or if I'm hosting a thing, if I'm emceeing a thing. Fair enough. I will be there. But that's not all. Like, I've seen you now. You've been, you've been showing up to a few fucking cool things. Now, I know you're getting free shit, but Tom, I've never seen anybody like fucking crossy. <laughs> I, he, he put up because he was leaving spin. I must get him on this just to rip the piss out of me. He was, he was leaving spin and it was all like, gonna miss you. And you were, he's got up the fucking corridor, like, yeah. but it's gonna miss you all love hearts. And I goes, but who's going to turn up to every single fucking <laughs> premiere opening and fucking and he's like you're some cunt <laughs> oh, do you know what I'm awful at the fucking premieres because I'm not I fucking hate people Tom like, I'm I know, be honest yeah, with you yeah, I really yeah. don't like people yeah. uh, I've got about 6-7 minutes of charm in me that I'm done yeah, you yeah, know yeah. so I, I, I'm all I'm like, I try and just get out the fucking door straight away a lot of the time is I don't get to the like this is <laughs> sound like I'm making excuses for competence a lot of the time I don't get to go to the press screenings in the morning so I'll go to the evening screenings yeah. but it's the same fucking people and I can't be I don't really give a shit what you thought about the film yeah. if you have to form your own opinion on it yeah yeah like a still occasion are the people faking it do you know what I mean to the point where they, you know it, or they're vacant behind the eyes like when they're going they're saying the same shit they saw you the last time you're like oh my god you know it's so great to see you it's like fuck man I, I, I'm, I'm half thinking of shoving a nail <laughs> you know what I mean like I could run through that plate glass window right now like I, it just fucking ended I, like. I had this real weird because uh, I, did, I did two shows for three years which is kids TV and RT and I did two years where I like interviewed actors and movie stars and fucking directors and was part of the show and then the third year I filled in for Paul Walsh who was presenting at the time yeah. it's in Roy 7 you should get Paul on the podcast he's fucking awesome nice, brilliant nicest dude on earth and just brilliant at what he did he's also fucking drinking that Keanu Reeves unicorn blood I don't know he looks about, oh, fucking, 20, looks yeah. about fucking 25 the bastard but I filled in for him in the final <laughs> year and it was before I made any of the documentaries and yeah. it, it was a weird fucking uh, people would not know your name and they would just come up and like either be aggressive or just take a picture of you or like yeah and like this is a low shitty fucking not even the, they just know your face but they couldn't know your face because you looked like a guy who worked a fucking extra vision yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. and it was it's a really cringe like like if you have somebody coming up to you that's all one of your sets yeah. it's lovely and yeah. nice it's yeah, like yeah. fucking I worked hard on that and he appreciated this thing I did as opposed yeah. to like, you're, 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 you're that cunt from the death <laughs> that's what you would call well, it I still get it what I get is uh, I get kind of people looking at me you know what? When they squint their eyes, going, <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Where the yeah. fuck? And you, 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 they're almost putting you on a spot. Like, hold on, where do I know you from? Yeah, and you're like, no, I don't know. You, but you start, t- you start naming stuff you've done, and they're like, no. Oh, and and you feel like, like oh. some back then. I had a gas one, and um, I was getting a taxi one night. I was in the back of the taxi. Yeah, and. Uh, I was sitting down. This this will be relevant in a few, in a few moments. So sitting down, obviously, I like I was this. In the ba- sitting down. I was obviously in the back of the taxi. And the taxi driver fucking put the mirror, just the mirror, and looks and goes, "Yeah, you're a man that does those films, aren't you? You do all those things <laughs> on the telly." And I was like, "Oh so yeah, 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 yeah." And he goes, "Yeah." Uh, he's like I like the way you review our films now I have to say you're very honest and you know you're very articulate and fuck I was like I'm right. taking a piss out of taxi driver my father's been a taxi driver for a long time <laughs> but he's like yeah very you know fair play to you and I'm like I fucking say I'm just tight to me you know like, what's Mark Hagney like anyway he thought it was Gordon fucking Hayden oh my god but I was, sitting down. I was Christ, sitting down <laughs> I was sitting down I was sitting down so I was like Friend of the show, Gordon Hayden I've got a foot taller than Gordon you know like so I was sitting there but we've just, we had the same kind of colour in and I was like, oh, oh you're yeah. white and you've got black so hair. So obviously, I was like, Mark Hagney's a cunt. He kicks puppies. <laughs> Tell everybody Gordon Hayden said that. Uh, so yeah, he thought he thought it was Gordon. So that, that's that's a, that's a kind of level that you're at there. And then when I made the documentaries, it was much smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would get people kind of uh, like we were like after the ultra marathon one. Myself and Brian were running the double marathon, thinking we were shit hot. We were like, oh fucking piss this marathon. Yeah. Oh fucked. So yeah. Train properly. And there was these, there was these two girls uh, running along and doing a marathon in incredible shape and very attractive. Yeah. And they were fucking pegging it along doing the marathon. And uh, they were like, oh, there's, there's the lads from the, from the from documentary, the 126, they're in the ultra marathon. Damn, and so yeah. me and Brian picked up the pace for a while. Yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> up the road, we're like kneeling over and two girls fucking <laughs> stroke, like, you know, jog past. And we're like, oh, the fucking shame. But it, like, it, since the MMA one in particular, I've had a, I've had a few people kind of come up to me and, and be really fucking nice. Any kids yeah, yeah. that saw it that kind of got them into MMA. Because when we were making that documentary, uh, I kind of realised what we were making. I was like, nobody's going to give a fuck about me. I mean, there's a journey there and there's a fight at the end of it. And it, it was more about the sport. 
and then when you meet on Roddy and you meet this guy and he's just the most incredible fucking that's not what I took from him I totally took you were you were championing the regular Joe like yeah. you were that's that, that, I think yeah you you may have missed the point there <laughs> people saw it as like oh fuck that's a regular dude yeah Do you know, that's the half the attraction of Conor McGregor the fact that he mentioned he was on the fucking dole yeah yeah oh, we were all on the dole was this is great <laughs> I could ju- like there is a possibility I could get there you know yeah. what I mean this is more so what I think I took from that show, I just right? thought like Owen was just Owen kind of was just on that and I hosted an event with him and John Cavanaugh last week for Penguin and it's great to have Owen at that level now to see Owen Roddy doing the Late Late Show because he's just so genuine he just is what his, he is his, his vlogs are very oh, good oh I think millions of views very you know? good though but he was on he was on stage last week with John just to get the two lads I've done a bunch of stuff with John I did John's book launch in the Mansion House last year with Connor and right, yeah, yeah. Henry and all those and that was deadly but to get John and Owen on the same stage and just to have Owen fucking crack up the crowds just being himself. He seems like a very funny guy. He's a very funny guy, and there's not a fucking, there's not a bit proud about him. But when we were making a documentary. I was like, and this guy would rip your fucking head off. Yeah. Remember one of the first things he said to me was like, um, we were kind of training away, and <clears throat> we went and we sparred. First time we sparred. Yeah. And he needed to know. Look, am I going to look like an absolute cock here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because initially the plan was nine months training, and then ended up being three or four. And he's like, this lad has to have a bit of wallets about him, and that yeah. he has to at least be tough. So he swung and he hit me, and he caught me. <laughs> And I swung back and I was like, like badly, sloppily. And he goes, I knew then that you were tough. There was a bit of giddy up in you. There's a bit of giddy up in you, exactly. And that's all there is. And that could be yeah, that could be anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean I have any fucking semblance of a skill set. But you know, like, you know yourself, like, there's lads who go around and they look, they might, they might look shit hot because they're hitting the gym. But you know full well, it goes to the wind with fucking, you know, it shit the pain. Yeah, I mean, and and the the whole, what I kind of took from that more than anything else, apart from just sports. And I'm in the position now where. I get because I made the documentary and I, and I train and, and I fought and stuff where I'll get people looking for me to come on and defend it whatever if, if it's in the news and Connor's yeah, on yeah, and, yeah. you know or that, that chap passed away there last year which was fucking horrific you know yeah. in a position then where you, you people ask you to kind of come on and talk about the sport you yeah. know but it just gets to a certain point where the sport just has to be the sport and it's not going to be and it is a sport and it's just some people are just not going to be fucking into it so just of course it's not, it's, but sure I mean look how many more fellas get fucked playing rugby like that's it I mean, I mean I worked with a guy uh, back in the, in the Joe.ie days who former professional rugby player Dave Hewitt really fucking sound guy oh yeah 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 and David had played for Leinster in Toulon I think and David had so many concussions and he was like not a fucking bother I came in one day with a broken nose and concussion from sparring and I was like a fucking like I was like my nose it's <laughs> We should go home. I thought it was grand and I went into the lift and pressed all the wrong buttons and my girlfriend was like, ah, she should probably go to hospital. But David had like, he was like, he comes in like in fucking ribbons and he's like, yeah. And then like, fellas are on another level. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you, like you see him up close like, because I do this, I host these things with Heineken every so often like, and it's normally with um, old, you know, previous yeah. legends, shall we say like, which are even looking at him going, that fucker could still go. Ah, yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, you. Like, like, doing sitting beside Mick Galway, like, and you look down yeah. at those paws, like, and you're going, ah, fuck, oh, He flatters me with those. Yeah, you know, that's it. It's curtains. I don't give a fuck how tough I think I am. Yeah, what it is, it, it, all it, I think all it did for me, on, on a personal level, like, and, and still does for me in training, yeah. and I'm, I'm probably more conscious of the fact I'm a bit bigger, and I'm from Kulak, and like I say, I'm a certain way and everything else, <laughs> yeah. you know, but all it did for me is it gave me a bit of confidence. Yeah, of course. Guess, yeah, 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 that was my next question, yeah, didn't it? Like, yeah, it would have yeah. cracked a little fucking wall that no, you might yeah, have yeah, gone through like, before. I've, I've been in situations where people have tried to intimidate me since. Yeah. And, uh, like not often or ever just been out or whatever well, blokey blokes do like you know what I mean fucking yeah. wankers who do, do take that course you know like oh. you, you, you can see them straight away yeah. like they do that up have you have you gotten that <laughs> you know that upward fucking handshake thing that these fucking fuckers learn is it the secret or one of these fucking oh, things where they I'm teach so you how to shake out oh they want to be alphas <laughs> and they're kind of they stand they stand that too close to you like and it's like Dude, what the fuck? Like, I know. I think that. I know? think the whole. I think the whole. It's hilarious. Uh, like, the whole notion of the alpha male is hilarious because when you when you train with people, there's always somebody you can beat the fuck out. Yeah. Put it that way. I think I'm tough, and then Carl Pendred walks in and does something. I'm like, yeah, he's four and two in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, yeah. you know, what are you gonna do? But yeah, you know, that the whole uh, the whole notion of the alphas, I think, is hilarious because I think what people's ideals of what an alpha is this tough guy and a fucking tattoos or whatever and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna dominate you and I'm gonna shake your hand in a certain way or whatever it is 
from somebody who's been in charge of people for for years and whatever. Yeah. People don't fucking respond to that. Do shit. they? Fuck. It's uh, like that's a that is, like how what is missing in that person? Exactly. So, like, but if you even that, watch it and look, uh, yeah, don't know the man personally. But if you even look at Obama's last couple of weeks in office, yeah, every time he got an opportunity, he was making it about other people. He was making it about Joe Biden. He was making it about his wife Michelle. Yeah, and our guys like Joe Rogan, our guys like even Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, like you know, we're, we're taping this on a Tuesday, and he was crying last night on his the monologue because of what happened in Las Vegas. Yeah, they're not afraid to show emotion. Yeah, and that's true of all the guys who were trying with Inspire, who are tough as fuck. That's will yeah. end you, and they're kind of nerdy, and they're they have no problem showing emotion or whatever. So that kind of fucking that idea of oh, I'm going to dominate you or a handshake is like yeah. shut up, you, you. <laughs> you have no yeah. idea it's and phenomenal isn't it, it like, is and there's a, there's a level of security and there's a level of security as well that comes from like somebody like, like a comedian yeah. who can like fucking destroy somebody in two sentences you're like don't try and be funny with me because I do this for a living so. I know it's, it's bizarre cause, and it really shown to me because I remember I when one of the first podcasts actually was the first was you know Spike O'Sullivan Gary yeah yeah, yeah. boxer yeah because uh, I would go up um, I made friends with him a long time. Like he came, he used to come to a lot. He's fascinated with comedy, stand-up yeah. comedy. I think he'd actually make a decent comedian too. Like because people will fucking laugh anyway. To be afraid not to. But he's, <laughs> you honest to God, meeting the guy like you're going, it's Jesus Christ, he's the most. I've never met somebody so gentle. Yeah. And then you see him in the, like he just like he had a TKO at the weekend in Boston, like and just to see the butchering he did to your man. Like, yeah. Like he fucking but like the guy was a tough bastard staying yeah. to the fourth round with him like and you're going how can you and I said it to him like and I, I interviewed um, Pascal and I, Stevie Collins as well Stevie Collins Jr. because the lads were all fighting out of Celtic Warrior yeah. or whatever and he's just like Stevie your man Stevie is phenomenal like talk about like he played pro rugby with wasps yeah he just an athlete just an athlete yeah. like and then at 24 went shoulders of bollocks from fucking from scrummaging um, I'm going to take up boxing <laughs> And became a pro boxer and beats people. Yeah. He's actually, well, I mean, yeah. he, it's in his heritage, but yeah. just chatting him. man was incredible. But yeah. there's no effort, like there's no kind of, there's none of these handshaking, no. cabby things. They're really, they're, they're delighted I'm up there because, okay, it's time, yeah. you know, it's like, we do, a, we do a normal job. You're like, you do it, like, you're one, some of the most ferocious people. Like, if you can, like, the last guy that Spike fought, he broke his fucking ribs, broke three ribs with a body punch through those giant gloves. Can you yeah, imagine having that? You could gloves. barely do that with a hurley. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, sure, it's a thing, you know." Yeah, you know, I mean that's what. It, I, mean, I mean, I'm sure there's mutual respect there between all. all oh the, yeah, all of the, course. All like. of the guys that fight, you know. But no, it's it's quite, it's funny. I think that people think it's an aggressive. I haven't been in like touch wood. I've been in a fight since I was a kid, since I was like eleven or yeah, twelve yeah, yeah. or something, and I don't want to be. You know what I mean? I know that. You know, and there's all first of all, there's always somebody tougher. Like there's always, always somebody yeah. fucking tougher. There's always somebody who fucking is just a scumbag and who has something and will fucking do, you know try and properly hurt you yeah. or properly injure you. But you know these these guys and particularly the guys in SBG and you probably see it, Richard, the next when you're talking to Rich. Yeah, the sweetest guys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Know, there's an element of marketing and, and smack talk, but that's to each other. That's that's people that are on the level. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're, yeah, you're yeah. talking to this sort of guy, you're going to fight, and there's an element of. I have to wrap my head around getting in a cage with this fucker and just going at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's yeah. And it, so there's, there's obviously an element of it to that. But no, I, I find that fascinating. I find the whole what people perceive to be alpha males, what people perceive to be leaders, and you know, like one, one of my best friends, uh, growing up, was, he played professional football. A guy called Thomas Butler. Right. He played for Sunderland. He played he's a few caps for Ireland and stuff. And I always found it fascinating with him talking about the managers that he had mm. and how they would deal with the players because you're dealing with massive, massive egos. Yeah. And yeah, when yeah. he left, he left Swansea when Brendan Rodgers was in charge of Swansea. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And he loved Brendan Rodgers and Roberto Martinez, these guys. Yeah. And it was how they spoke to him. And it was how they spoke to the players and how they dealt with the dressing room. And like Brendan Rodgers has kind of got a reputation of being like a David Brent type character. Yeah. <laughs> and he, I'm a huge Celtic fan. I fucking love the man. And he is, right? Yeah, He's kind yeah. of cheesy. But I remember Tom telling me that like when his contract was up and they weren't going to renew, he'd been injured and stuff, he was going to go abroad. Brendan Rodgers sat him down yeah. and kind of talked to him about it. And he said he left that. He called me after. He left that room ready to fucking run through a wall for him. Really? You know, so does Is he like a dead figure nearly? You know, I think he's just, I think he just knows how to communicate with people. Yeah. And the, like the best, it doesn't matter what you do, whether you're in charge of people, if you're a coach, when you know how to communicate with people, you'll be a really good fucking coach. And all the way from the John Cavanaugh's to the people that are coaching local football teams yeah. or underage football teams you have to know how to speak to people and, and kind of you know engage with people and when you do and you show that you will do anything for them as well of course then you know they run through fucking walls for you you know because we had uh, my school's coach in rugby was Alan Quinlan 
Oh no! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> but we won everything. Yeah. He just had every dirty trick in the book. Like. Yeah. But as calm as could be, like, like yeah. he came from a family of they're all savages. Like they're all tough men. Like. Yeah. But, they're actually tough blokes. Yeah. Like, do you know that old, that real culture is fucking, fucking Got crazy. Got farmer strong. Got fucking uh, farmer strong. There's a guy, strong. there's a chap that lives across the way, uh, across from us where we're living. Now we're out, just out the country a little. And if you ever look at somebody and go, man, you would fuck anybody up. But the gentlest bloke, yeah. he's a lovely fella. He's just, he was rehanging. I came home, the fucking gate was, and he was rehanging it for me. He was like, yeah, I just, I know it was a bit gammy. Yeah. I didn't mean to get to that. He got that about it. And this gate, like, you know those old wrought iron, those yeah. old gates, like, from when well, it's actually iron, not fucking some yeah. substitute. This shit, like, you would not, two men would barely hold this gate. He had it yeah. up in one arm and was welding it. Holding a welder in the other one, no goggles, just kind of looking away, just while he's doing. You're going, holy Jesus Christ! But you look at these looking hands; away. they look like hands for hands. Yeah. Like, and there's like, and this guy is just pure lifting cows and stra- yeah. trailer strength, and the gentlest man you've yeah. ever, like a total sweetheart. Like, because he doesn't, he doesn't need to be fucking aggressive. Right? I think, People I, look at him I think he's like, a bit shy of his size, even like you know what I mean. Well, it's, it's, just, it's like when you hear that about. You know, people who are like obviously not in st- like in stature, but people who are like super famous. Yeah, so, like, yeah, yeah. I heard that about. I've never met him, but I've heard that about Steven Spielberg. That he's so he knows who he is. He's so acutely aware of people being intimidated. Yeah, when they meet him, that he's instantly self evasive because well, that's, a, that's a super sound bloke. Like they put mean? people at ease, yeah. and it probably makes his fucking day easier <laughs> dealing with the people. Yeah, on a day to day. So my point being that when you know you're just fucking just this joint of a man, that people yeah. are gonna look at you and go, "What the fuck." <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay. You don't need to be aggressive as well. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like a, you know, it's Jesus. Even me, and I'm fucking hardly joint. Like I mean, like somebody skips me in a queue or something like that. I won't say anything for the most part. Yeah, because I'm like, if I fucking lose it, I'm calling the right police. But that's Dude, the thing too. You got to get fucking arrested, and your <laughs> name is going to be definitely up that, on fucking entertainment. Editor. Yeah, yeah, that's it. If you that's just the shit out of some sixteen year old young fella <laughs> as he tries to impress. Look at my cat now, dear. Yeah. I'm going to wear it up your whole day. That's a true fucking story. It happened a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to walk away. I'm just oh. going to let that happen. Well, do you think that's kind of a thing like that's happening? Because I know it's like friends now and they're kind of like they like that and I was talking about the deer hunting thing and you were going, oh, so helpful, you know, such a male. It's not really like, it's just something that it's a, I didn't, don't do it for the sake of fucking yeah. doing I really like deer meat. Yeah. I really fucking And you want to catch your own food. I want to catch my own food because yeah. I just think ethically, I think it's way yeah. fucking better than, you know, standing around yeah. waiting for somebody to fucking hop well, up there. there's an honour in that, so to speak. I'm not yeah. joking with you. There, there is not one wasted bit of that yeah. animal. Stop, all the way down to his bones are going to be yeah. stock, like, you know. Yeah. But mates of mine, are, they nearly scoff at a small because they're like, oh, fucking, I'm failing so much as being a man because, you know, you... And they're like, you're fucking not. <laughs> just don't be a cunt. And that's the perfect sort of blow. <laughs> You don't have to assume that I yeah. have, that because I fucking it, once every couple of I don't do it on a weekly yeah. daily basis. It once it once every during the hunting season maybe yeah. I get out three four times. Yeah, that'll be it. But it was almost they feel that there's a pressure on blokes now to be more manly, yeah. and then on the flip side, be frightening your masculinity in another yeah. way. Then like, cause you like I, that's one thing I know you're not in any way frightened the fucking showing off masculinity. But there seems to be kind of a white knight fucking syndrome <laughs> going around at the minute where it's like. You know, you can't be too manly. It's kind yeah. of fuck off. I mean, I think, like, just, like, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's like, kind of, don't be a cunt. There's a whole lot of virtue signaling and, and kind of white light stuff now. And then on the flip side of that, there are lads who are just absolute cunts. Oh, yeah, And yeah, need yeah. to be taken down on a peg or two. I was kind of, I was really ignorant to a certain degree because I just, and it is ignorance, that's what it is. Yeah. Because I don't associate with pricks like that. And then you read the comment section or something, like a couple of friends of mine made a show uh, recently deadly show two girls two really good looking girls and they made a show and the comments underneath it were like <laughs> misogynistic fucking assholes and yeah. I was like but I go to a place where I'm like I want to I click on their Facebook profile do I have any mutual friends yeah 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 you yeah. know so my point being anyway there's, there is that is out there but on the flip side of it there are people who just look for retweets there are people yeah. who you know like I mean I've, I've, I don't I don't feel like I have anything to add to the conversation in certain, in like with the you know, be any hot button political stuff. If yeah. I would, if I if I think if I thought I did, I would. Yeah, yeah. But stuff yeah. like you know, repeal the aid or whatever. Like I've got my own personal views on that. Like I'm fucking, I one hundred percent believe in a woman's right to choose. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. don't feel like in one hundred and forty characters or two hundred whatever characters now, how I can articulately you know add to that discussion. I just yeah. can't. I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah. No. No. no same so, as that. I. I. That's exactly my feeling. Like, and it's like. I have nothing to add, lads. I got drive on 100%, but honestly, me waving my arms in the air, yeah. 
what am I, I personally I feel like a fucking douchebag because I've nothing to give you I've yeah. nothing to hand and over I think here when people that. try and do that I think it's it's very transparent oh I hope I, it is because fuck yeah. me you're looking at it sometimes and going dude we were we were kind of friends we shared a pint one to what are you fucking doing I, I knowing full well yeah it's almost like the you know the like, I mean it's fine to say you know hearts and wishes did you ever see Anthony Jeselnik yeah yeah Australian comedian yeah. no he's that fucking he's a ridiculously good looking motherfucker from America and he's no so dark yeah, I know uh, uh, I, there is an Australian fellow with a funny name yeah. as well no Jeselnik is worth seeing yeah. you'd like him now he is on a level of darkness <laughs> but so well craftily yeah, written yeah, yeah. that I saw him at the Vodafone it was amazing he did this bit about you could see there was a lot of people who were staying for um, uh, Russell Howard was on after him and there was a lot of people in early and a lot of people who were not ready for Russell Howard's great but he's lighter yeah lighter. like Jezenek had one opening one was like, and it was basically slagging all the women in the room for being ugly like you know what I mean but he did it in such a funny way a lot of the girls are going I get this yeah, we're at a comedy enough, we're at a comedy yeah, gig yeah. this is great you know and he did another bit though he's like I hate tattoos on young girls you know he's yeah. like my 18 year old uh, daughter of my neighbour you know I said it to him the other day I was just looking at her she had a tattoo on her back and I was just going jeez how shit is that going to look stretched over my lamp tree <laughs> <laughs> but he did this bit about fucking virtual signalers that the level of almost fucking the, the irony the irony of being of you know fucking my prayers and wishes with such a situation yeah. and he took it out of time because he lost the entire not, he lost about 45% of the room yeah. and the way he went hard after these cunts yeah but it took him 18 minutes and by Jesus he brought the whole room back on side going I am one of those cunts I'm absolutely making the situation worse it's when you because see, I'm, I'm clogging up I'm yeah. clogging up the track with actual genuine people who can fucking help yeah, you know like, what I mean like I, I, people just they, people kind of want to you know that kind of self oh fuck, what's self it's kind of, it is self aggrandizing where you know somebody dies and you put a thing up and you're like oh and to some people you're like fucking you have a story about every fucking celebrity oh do you have a story? Yeah. The one guy I had a story about, um, it wasn't even really a story, like, and I, because we, we, but when Paul Walker died, basically. Oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, I was, I'd interviewed him one, I interviewed him one time, and there was a few of us from, some of us from the BBC, somebody from Australia, and we basically got to spend six days in Rio, in Brazil, and hang out, and I'd already interviewed The Rock, and, and Diesel, and stuff before, but we got to sit down with That's Paul Walker. Class. But it was on a, it was on a promenade, I was on like a balcony on the beach, so yeah. it was just a really surreal setup for a movie junkers, and you got to watch these actors interact you tempted to take your shirt off yeah, hang around, fuck like. no not then, not then I wasn't fucking sitting across the rock, rock. Uh, but you got to see how these people interacted with journalists from around the world yeah. when English wasn't their first language and so you got to spend a the day there basically waiting to go and do your junkets and your I went to go and do your interviews and stuff and we got to see Paul Walker and, and kind of inter- interact with people and just be fucking genuine and be like I remember he was like uh, I was like this is better than fucking the hotel room he's like this is fucking much better than a hotel room yeah and he was like, "What did he say?" Because like, him and the Rock were supposed to come to Dublin for that premiere, and I think I think Prince William was getting married or somebody, some oh, boy was getting married. Right. Fucked everything up anyway, and he couldn't. He was like, "Yeah, I'm supposed to go to Ireland. I'm fifty percent Nick, man. I wanted to go to fucking Ireland." Yeah, yeah. You know? And it was a small interaction in the greater scale of things. Yeah. But when he died, and you've met somebody that's famous that died, it's like anybody you've met that died. Yeah, it's yeah, a real yeah. thing. Yeah. And there was a few of us in, uh, who, who had kind of met him and had that experience and who were kind of like, fuck, because he was so young and I'm so far, such a horrific way yeah. to kind of go, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of, the, unless you've got a personal, a deeply personal experience or the, everything's different to everybody in, in person. Yeah, right. I suppose. But then yeah. there's like, there's a couple of people posting on fucking, you're like, every celebrity, really yeah, every celebrity. Like, oh, there's somebody, like, there's one, you, you've hit the nail on the head there because there was one this morning and it was like, like the, <coughs> Tom Petty. Yeah, passed away, yeah. Passed away. But he kind of hung in there for a while and then, he did, yeah. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, um, but it was just, uh, fucking hell, this, you're going to, I, I, did you know him too, did you? <laughs> Do you know, the one and only time I ever, ever wrote anything, and I actually said it, I never write about this fucking stuff because I don't know the people, but yeah. the one and only time was Rick Mayla died. Yeah. And oh. I worked with him on a fucking series. Bottom as well. It was obsessed with Bottom. Yeah. Was you know what I mean? Fucking great show. He was Ivor's dad on Demo and Ivor. He's a genius. So we yeah. got to hang out and smoke fags and have dinner together. Yeah. So that, but, And he genuinely was a person who, would, he made me think differently about stuff, like, you know, yeah. and yet he came to a gig here at the International. Um, and a whole lot so but it was, that was the one and only time I went fuck I'm genuinely affected by this but then I suppose like that maybe maybe I don't know we were colder or whatever but maybe other people because this one woman I know when David Bowie died she was fucking inconsolable 
Yeah. I'd say you probably know her too. <laughs> yeah. Actually, but to the point where she was like, "I could, I'm not work getting out of bed today." Yeah. You're like, really? Was David planning on making you breakfast or something? Like, I'm not being facetious, but I get at the same that when time, people like, have a personal connection with somebody's music or somebody's journey or somebody's, you know, you don't need to necessarily have met somebody. I yeah, get I suppose, that. yeah. I get that. I mean, especially for somebody like Bowie, because he's done so much. Yeah, yeah. He's yes, an icon, yeah, yeah. icon, and people feel like, oh, he's kind of an outsider, and I, you know, yeah. I align with that or that, whatever. It's when it's fucking everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steady on. Now. Yeah. You're like, lads, come on. But th- that's just another element, I think, of, of kind of, look, I want to be. I want to get the right kind of retweets here. I want to get the right kind of likes yeah. here. And I mean, look, I'm, I'm probably guilty of it as well from time to time with other shit. So, I mean, I kind of get it. It's, you know, the one thing that kind of bugs me is hypocrisy. When yeah. you, you know for a fucking fact, fact that people don't mean it. And like, <laughs> yeah. like me, you know, this is the thing I should say now because I'm sort of kind of in the public eye. So I'm going to say that thing now, you know. And there's people who make nuanced points and, yeah. and kind of arguments for stuff who are really good at it and, and can do that. Um, but like, for me, from running publications, the two publications I ran are light and fucking frivolous. Yeah. Nor should they be doing anything remotely heavy. You shouldn't. Is that what? And with the fourth wall, then tell me more about the fourth wall. Uh, yeah, all the well, yeah. We st- um, obviously the fourth wall means breaking the fourth yeah, wall. Right, like, some people, people get it, and some people don't get it. For anybody all. who doesn't yeah. get it, it's yeah, it's a, a perfect example. Would be comedians like to hide away until after they've the the show done, yeah, yeah. because you don't want to be seen as a real person. Yeah, you know? exactly. You, yeah. you know, and you'll often meet actors after, say, a theatre performance, still in character. Yeah, because you, you, it ruins the fucking illusion. Yeah, so that's so, the fourth wall. Yeah, it's a Shakespearean term, so yeah. it basically means kind of. And if you break that fourth wall, it means speaking to the audience. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that's what you're different from. I sat her up with a guy I worked with in Joe. I uh, hired him as an intern. Yeah, and he's he's the head of digital for Off the Ball now, Adrian Collins. Right, and he's fucking just brilliant. Like, like really smart opinions and stuff but knows the style shit yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I mean we were like look we want to kind of do something kind of slightly not higher end but like because we're not higher end but something kind of something Bill Simmons-esque yeah maybe yeah, a bit yeah. more bit more pop culture and lifestyle stuff in there the issue we're having is he's a fucking full time job yes I have yeah, a full time yeah, yeah. job and it's just difficult getting the content up yeah. there and I don't like having you know we could go and get a fucking army of interns there's a few publications who do that and seem to have kind of like revolving doors of yeah of kind of standard of being diluted of. fairly quickly though yeah it? yeah and I mean it's, it's funny because just on that it's like I I spoke to I, so I did this uh, that, that talk with John and Owen last week and I've done yeah. a bunch of them before and some journalists are really really good at crediting so I did the talk went really well I got stuff from John and stuff from Owen that I knew would take off yeah as a guy there called P.T. Carroll from MMA Fine yes one of the yeah, best yeah, yeah. MMA journalists yeah. definitely in the country and, and you know you're He's incredible at what he does. So PT watched it talk, you know, report from MMA Fight, which is the biggest MMA website in the world, credited me, blah, blah, blah. Fair play. So the interview went everywhere and the quotes went everywhere and like, you know, Yahoo Sports, Fox Sports, all that stuff as well. It was just nice. It didn't matter. Yeah. That yeah so you're not nice. monetizing it like, it but yeah. It was nice that my name was because all oh, you have to sit on stage and prepare their interview yeah. and do the interview or whatever. A couple of Irish publications didn't credit me. <laughs> what do I used to work for? <laughs> but they credit the source. So, People get lazy, and that's what happens where it, may, it might be an intern, it might be somebody who's new. Yeah, that they just fucking read the piece and scan the piece and throw back to that piece. Where like there was a bit more to it than that. You yeah, know? But that's yeah, and then, there you go. The, the shit goes out the window then, like, yeah, because yeah. You, half the fucking story is lost because you didn't credit Mike in it. Yeah, like, you know? yeah. I mean, it's a small thing. It's a small thing, but it's something I really try and hammer home with people that I kind of work with. And look, I fucked up. You know, I just like put some shit up on Joe years ago. I was like, "What was I fucking thinking?" You know. Yeah, but that and and that's exactly it. At least you're smart enough to know. Yeah, what yeah, the fuck yeah. Was I, I think mean, fucking nothing. Or hopefully, nothing kind of too bad. But just in terms of my own moral compass. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. And in terms of <laughs> fucking, I had one. Who knew? <laughs> uh, but like, just in doing hard news stuff. I don't. I don't think publication should do hard news that don't have either news wire or reporters on the ground. Yes. And yeah, I kind yeah. of got to that point going because it's easy to fucking just throw a link back to somebody or to get something wrong and then the, the possibility of misinformation been out there. The possibility of misinformation been out there about a celebrity is bad enough about just some fucking thing. Yeah. That's frivolous. That's not going to be life altering for anybody. That's bad enough. Yeah. About something like a fucking terrorist attack or about Oh Jesus, yeah. And that yeah. happens a lot. Yeah, I can only imagine. You know, Reddit's not a source. I say to my guys all the time, like, look, even about the shit we do, which is light, like Reddit's not a source, you know, Twitter's not a source, chase stuff as much as you can chase. And people still make mistakes. I know you've made mistakes. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of doing it, but that's kind of trials and tribulations of running a publication that's 
you might get a, you know and 10, 30, probably 2, 3 million people a month Fuck all, these, it, yeah, are, all yeah, these other sites get around the same number what's what's the plus what are you getting out of this yes, you know yeah, what's yeah. you're going to get a few thousand more clicks kind of what does it matter you know is it is it a tough job like I mean uh, yeah I mean a, yeah I mean but an editor is like I mean like it pays the bills yeah you know yeah, like yeah. it's like I mean when I was in Joe Joe was probably far more of a reflection of me at the time because I was like 29 yeah 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 you know uh, and I was a great fit part two uh, <laughs> yeah I mean it was more like when I went there it was you know it taken off it was getting popular on social media yeah but it wasn't quite didn't quite know what it was and there's some brilliant brilliant journalists there at the time we've all gone on and kicked on and done fucking deadly things yeah but it just needed a bit of structure so when I went there it was like the three hundred and eight. The last month was three hundred eighty thousand people. When I left, it was two million. Uh, now, since I've left, it's gotten bigger. You know what I mean? It was just became. You set him on the right path, Mike. You, I know what I mean. You know what I mean? And this is the thing. I had fucking deadly journalists working for me who, with me, who could, I could fuck off and do other things and be part of the brand somewhere else that needed to be done or reclined right, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would keep things ticking along because they were just fucking great at their jobs. And I'm not surprised that they've gone on and done what a deadly things. Entertainment's kind of. You know, it's like it's different. Like Joe Maxwell Media, there just has all these resources and right, they're yeah, flying. Yeah. You know, yeah, and it's great to see an Irish company fucking doing so well. You know, entertainment's kind of it's entertainment and it's Butte and kind of like Butte.ie, which they bought uh, a few years ago. And it's like if you want to do your own thing, if you want something to be a reflection yeah. of you, then you kind of have to go and do it yourself. And it's just and that's what the Fort Wall is. And you know, I get these other gigs from, from time to time, but that's kind of what that is. Like, uh, I love the guys I work with. There. The guys I work with there are fucking great. Is it a big unit? Like, is it a- not really? I think I've about six full timers. I think of two or two or three freelancers, uh, and I've, I've a guy actually who uh, doing a digital course does two days, but a week, uh, just to kind of get him a bit of experience in stuff. Lean, he's deadly. So it's yeah, it's 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 also realizing that it's a privilege as well. Yes. I try and get that yeah, to the guys yeah. when I come in, and I'm like, look. Oh, when I started there, I had the cinema listens for nearly two years. That was what I did. Right. And it was in a time frame of like. I had to be off to like the Irish Times by four o'clock on a Wednesday because you were essentially responsible for every cinema time for every film in the country and every cinema in the country. Jesus Christ, yeah. Yeah, so you had two days to do it. So it was intense. It was like, <laughs> it was like super intense data entry. So I realised, I had perspective then to be like, I fucking get to write for a living. When I got to write for a living, yeah. or I got to do what I really appreciated it. And I try and get, because nobody else has to do that now, you know? Yeah, and yeah, I, kind yeah. Of, I say to the guys when, when they kind of come in, I'm like, look, I asked somebody recently, do you want to interview this person? And they were like, ah, like, I'm like, look. What? You can't be a fan of fucking everybody. You know what I mean? Like, go, yeah. go and do it. And you learn from it. And, you know, you can't just interview people you like. Yeah. You know, you need to kind of earn that. You need to kind of get to that point as well, you know? Uh, but yeah, so it's, it, I mean, it is a tough job. It's a tough job being in charge of people. Yeah. Cause uh, you, but like that, like you actually said that very, I don't know how polite I was, because I worked in construction too. So, and it was kind of, there was very little asking. Yeah. It was, it was just straight out tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, there was no. Yeah. Do you want to? It was interview that fucker. <laughs> or or yeah. there's the door. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was the wrong way to go yeah. about things. Like there I was, was just, a, think, you, you know, but people, you wouldn't run away with yourself at the same time. Exactly. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and I'm, I mean, the sense that I mean, as a sub chapter in charge of people, I mean that I'm responsible. Yes. I don't the, mean any other yeah, way. Book stops at you, like book stops at me. That's all I mean. And touch wood, don't yeah. be fucked up so far. The team are deadly, but like. You know, there are instances where you see something and you're like, oh, I wouldn't have quite have done it like that or I wouldn't have quite have said it like that. And when something goes out into the ether, it's out there. Yeah. I feel responsible for it. I feel, as the editor, as my name's above the fucking thing. And look... Well, that's it too. It's not laying bricks either. There is... People can put their own... Twi- it's, an, it's an art form in what they're writing yeah. too. So it, it's going to come out a bit squirrely sometimes. Like, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, but you know, it's also... It's not a blog. You know, it's a publication. <laughs> you know, know? Yeah, like it's, yeah, it's monetized. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the CEO and the, and the sales team need to keep the fucking lights on and all of that. Right stuff enough, well. yeah. And that's a responsibility as well to kind of them. So... Yeah, I mean, it's not what I thought it would be years ago. And I was like, I'll be an editor. So I've been doing it for like six years now between two publications. And it's kind of the same. You know, like yeah. it's the same. Co- it's at the you same kind of level. You haven't started smoking a cigar yet and gotten grey spits up your side. Oh, shouting it. at Peter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Give me that picture. But you, your brain's kind of wired to, because it's you need to be quick. You need to get, yes, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get on shit. And that's something I want to kind of rewire my brain. And to be able to take a step back and to write more. And to, you know, do what I'm, I think what I'm good at is interviewing people. And... But I shit, I'm not good at it. I still do. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's what I think I'm good at. And I want to kind of get back to kind of doing what I'm good at. Yeah, but then, yeah. that shit doesn't pay the bills. I know, it's a fucker. Like, yeah, it is a fucker. But is it, have you anything um, sporty-wise coming up? Are you running 
Have, no. you, have you lined yourself up because not the Dublin City Marathon you, you're not going to bother with it oh, I've fucking I've done about fucking I don't know how many marathons so it's, it's I've done them now and it's like the, the point of doing one now like I don't do you know what you need to get into there's a mate of mine and uh, a phenomenal turnaround of a, of a bloke when, he, when we were like in our 20s he was smoking fags drinking <laughs> and then out of nowhere he just took he started playing rugby with us and took to fitness and now he's he's on the All-Ireland <laughs> trail running team Jeez. runs all over the world like and look bananas Barry Hartnett is his name so I'm going to get him on this in a couple of weeks he's like ah sure nobody be interested in what I have to say Tom like, you're fucking mental this is it like 50 mile treks through the Appalachian fucking mountains there's just a, match there's, it there's like. a, one of my best friends now he was in Challenge 126 a guy called Ash Senyak and he owns a shop called Run Logic in Temple Bar right an Australian guy and he's done like a nine and a half hour Iron Man Jeez. he just did three marathons back to back there the weekend and Ash is a dad bod I love the man but I'll tell you that too he's got a dad bod he doesn't look like an athlete but he can go out there and beast a marathon like with a hangover so he just oh fuck like, he's, he's just one some, of them fellas some yeah. fellas are just they're just kind of built like that, you know. He's Aussie, is he? He's an Aussie Asian yeah, boy. Fuckers. He's from fucking Adelaide. It's you know, like it's like just farm country. Yeah. Fucking. I was talking about a fella the other day, and he was saying that he, yeah, he's Australian guy. He's pro rugby player now, but he's um, he's trying to break into the monster team. But he was a cowboy, like he was a rancher. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was that like, it's just, oh shit, when you get really thirsty, you know, you're trying for a water hole, and you're trying. I'm like, what? <laughs> you didn't bring water out with you in the morning? Because nah, I never really thought about. It. Like. 45 degrees on the back of a horse for 14 hours a day and he's fa- and it wouldn't yeah. he was, you'd imagine that would have ruined the man's liver for life yeah nah. well I think nah. ultra, I think long distance or endurance athletes are kind of they're a different kind of breed they are yeah um, triathletes are pricks they're just like are they? watch people do try they're fucking pricks <laughs> kind of short I love this hierarchy the hardcore guys are just like they look at you they're checking your bike out like fuck this I did an Ironman 70.3 they all the trainer for it and I was like oh never again I like that I can swim a couple of miles now yeah. I have to I like that I got fit or whatever I got from it but like you know the hard those elements of the hardcore guys with their fucking like right and their fucking thousand four thousand euro bikes around. Like, <laughs> no but the ultra runners but everything is ruined by anorex Mike yeah it's everything true everything is fucking yeah, yeah. good beer has been ruined by fucking anorex <laughs> yeah. like uh, fuck I was in getting a coffee the other day in this gorgeous fucking place and I won't say where it is because I've talked like the coffee is fucking delicious there but the lad that was behind the counter they are chocolatiers as well because like, yeah. they make all their own fuck fucking hell he nearly ruined a cup of coffee on me he was like <laughs> so the beans are and he just started going on about temperatures and the weight and everything going up and I was like ah oh, oh, <laughs> fuck uh, it's fucking taste I mean, class yes yeah. we'll leave it look I'm uh, trust me it's class yeah, yeah we'll leave but it, it it's funny when knows in different people's personalities from like whatever they align with you know and yeah and, and the old runners are naturally into it they're naturally introverted they're naturally right. You, know, so you would be, but it's almost like a golfer. Your mind, you're saying by yourself a yeah, lot like, you just inside to, your own head. But like. I mean, you have to, you have to with that stuff in the Ironman as well. But it's different. You're on a bike, but for the for the ultra stuff, you're running for. We did training runs for one two six with myself and Brian. My brother dropped me and dropped it. I was like, wait, run home. Ah, I was here. like fifty four miles or Dundalk, wherever it was. He got to eighty k or wherever it was, fifty four miles, and kicked us out of the car. Jesus I mean, we asked him to do it. He just dropped yeah, me yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, right, run back. And you know, it's to mentally prepare yourself for something like that is you have to, and it's a training run. You, you just kind of have, and it's not. And people think that's. A, I didn't find that impressive at all. I didn't find anything I did there, anything me and Brian did there impressive at all. It was just something we did. There was no skill involved in it. There yeah, was no, still no. You switch your brain off, and you fucking just and you just go and do it. But yeah, like ultra runners in particular. Anybody who, you know, and I'm sure there's, there's variations of it in whatever endurance sport it is where, yeah, where you have yeah. to spend a lot of time on your own. The elite guys are completely different. The elite guys, to be an elite main, uh, mindset at anything, yeah. the Conor McGregor or a Michael Phelps or a LeBron James or a Tom Brady, that's a mindset I don't understand. No, they're, they're superhuman. Yeah, because they've got the genetics for it, but they've got the, you know, they've got the, the just... The, well, all the stars have aligned. Yeah, yeah. They're probably really shit at handwriting or something. You know, something Because <laughs> yeah. there's no way you can be the full fucking package. Yeah. Like, you know. Well, just to be an elite athlete at anything, and it's like, I was probably, like, I'm lucky probably genetically in that I can I can lose weight quickly, I can get into yeah. it, I can lose weight quickly, and, but I don't have a technical brain, and I find it hard, even now doing MMA, I find it hard to repeat like oh I'll be like blah 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 and I'll try and repeat that and I fucking can't but if I'm sparring I'll do it without thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have a shit short term memory and in terms of memory I'm yeah, a terrible yeah. fucking comedian but in terms of like memorizing stuff and, and getting some, what, what that got me good at was kind of thinking on my toes I suppose you know well, that's it to, that's it so I think do you know what that was a delicious fucking yoke we left plenty, plenty of meat on the bone for another one anyway <laughs> I think we probably I like with myself and Chris he came up with one last week did you ever hear of Paris syndrome Paris syndrome yeah no. it's a genuine thing normally born out of Asian people who go to visit places right so they have such Paris syndrome is based what it is is you have such a freak out that the place you go to visit isn't exactly what you're banking on 
that you shit the bed completely. And it was born out of people were freaking out that Paris, what, it just wasn't the gorgeous Eiffel Tower and, do you know, accordions playing and people eating fucking baguettes I've and never stuff. Heard that they were they actually have a mental breakdown. And they struggled to get home. Like they'd be, they'd have to, psychology of people were fa- fainting that it wasn't to the level of, of, of what we call it. So we were talking about maybe it's funny syndromes, but like we should do more fucking podcasts on fucking crazy bastards and fucking elite, elite athletes and just find what's wrong with them. Because it's very fair to wrap them up because they're already class winded shit. You need to find out what's fucking yeah, wrong with it's them. Like, it's like, you know, I always say, say, say to friends, like if I, if I end up doing up like a panel show or something, I'll be trending by the fucking end of it. Like, <laughs> go, go home and something like, this shit is lying. What are you thinking? That's it, you grow up, look at Twitter and go, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a good life, right? Yeah, that's it, that's it. Thank you very much, Mike Sheridan. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers.